George St. Borders Town Engineer yeah. Sturgis Park. Um, before we had the onset of snows, when we went back out there to look at a bunch of things, we actually did notice that there was something else that since we're doing all this work down there uh, to rectify it. In fact, the wing wall of the entrance of the uh, by South Street. Right. Um, it's the whole main easterly side is going to have to be replaced. You can't it's just fix the last 10 feet. You're going to have to go right for the thing. Okay. So it's sure, you know, it's, it's something that the WPI restructured their uh, tra uh, planting plan and everything. And it's sure there's something you're going to want to go look at. So, uh, you know, since there's still snow on the ground, I would recommend that this just get postponed to you. Probably maybe. Well, there's erosion around the upstream end of that wing wall. Yes. Yeah, we, we noticed that when we were down there. And I wanted to fix like the last 10 feet, but it's it's just the mishmash of granite and granite curving and everything, and there's no play, really clean place that you can stop and stop from. You're going to have to go right from the concrete. And actually what I'm proposing is that we're going to take all the granite out and put back the um, uh, gravity uh, concrete wall. Okay. Concrete wall. I'm sure it's something you're going to want to look at. So and you can't see it right now. Are you going to just um, add this on to the Sturgis? It's already, it's, uh, yes, it's already on the plans, and okay. the, the plans are in uh, the G WPI. is just about finished completing all the changes, so we could probably get all that information to you next week. And um, But since there's still snow on the ground, I would recommend maybe you may need it. That would probably give you time for the snow to melt and get out there and look at that so and do some work. Did that temporary patch on that eroded bank section hold? Yes. You know? Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Well, I'll put it this way. Before the snows, it was holy. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The snows helped it, so. So have, have you gone out, I mean, you've gone out to inspect that particular little patch recently? Yeah. Okay. Uh, recently, I, I actually was down there probably about a week and a half ago, and there was still snow coming, so okay. there was nothing reaching okay. out of it. Well, I think it's an advantage that we're, we've had a slow, gradual melt. Yes. I think Although that's I been really helpful. I must say that the snow in my neighborhood is uh, substantially more than what's around here. Yeah, yeah, it's still holding on, that's for sure. Okay, so you want to you want to continue this to a I meeting in May? I would say meeting in May. That, at least that way there, yes. I'm sure there's enough time for the snow to melt and you to schedule a site walk to go look at that additional area. Okay, let me give you the dates for the May meeting. Um, I, think the, I think the first meeting in May would be fine. Unless you are book that meeting. Right, I'm just going to take a quick look at... It would be the second. May... 14 or 21? Oh, I, let's try May 14. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you want to anything? Because the work can't be done until July or August. Okay. Is, is that all about Sturgis Park? That's it. Okay. Um, is there a motion? Any questions from the commission members? Besides what was asked? I move we continue the uh, hearing on Sturgis Park 270-0634 until 14 May. Second that. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Sullivan? Oh, I'm in favor, sorry. Okay. Um, unanimously in favor, okay. Um, it being passed 510, I'm going to have to move on to the 510 okay. notice of intent. Um, and then maybe Seven. after 710, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then maybe when we're done with our uh, scheduled business, we can then get to on the artist discussion. Mm -hmm. So would you stay for that? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to plan to squeeze it in, but what can I say? I, I know. It's my fault. <laughs> that's Sorry. No, that's, that's no, 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 no. Um, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. St. Boris. So, um, so then let's, I should have read the script for this. I'm sorry. Um, let's continue the reopen the public hearing for the notice of intent 270-0638. Stormwater General Permit Reading Public Works Department Engineering <coughs> Division is now being reopened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. Um, we are going to hear from the applicant and receive reports from our advisors. We will address questions to the applicant, and the public will then be given an opportunity to ask questions which should be directed to the chair. There's an attendance sheet. Mr. Couillard, I think, or, uh, um, there's an attendance sheet, so please sign in. I think it's um, back there. Thank you. And um, uh, Julie, starting with you, please introduce yourself. Julie Roger, reporting secretary. Rebecca Longley. Jamie Maughan. Anika Scanlon, chair. 
Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Good evening. Again, George okay. Sandhorst, Town Engineer. Um, I know Ryan was here for the uh, initial public hearing. And one of the concerns, um, although I think the Commission may have had less concerns, but one of the uh, reasons to modify what we had proposed was based on comments from DEP that they were concerned that we may uh, that the way it was worded before may trigger the 401 or the four, uh, 401 water quality of four, uh, 404 uh, Army Corps General Permits. So we um, modified the, uh, I don't know if you got a color one, you probably don't know what we have. You can still mine, see mine it. It's, color. it's okay, gray. So it's right. gray. So you we we modified tell. what right. we had proposed and made sure that the exclusions that the, the uh, that no project that's, uh, that's uh, eligible under this permit um, if it's revolved water, 401 water quality, uh, 401 dredge water quality, or certification of the Army Corps 404 is not permitted under this, uh, this uh, application. Uh, excuse me, but I cannot remember a single um, TAN project that required a 401 certification. Uh, Can there you remember any? There actually is one. Our, um, our water crossing at Belmont, I that would be all right. Because that's actually right. that's right. actually navigable water based on definition. Right. Uh, and because we're excavating and and putting it back, we're we're actually we actually don't have our 401 yet. <laughs> we're um, we ran into a little complication where the 404 general permit they, uh, for the army they expire in January, I think, and then they reissue the new one. So they were about to issue the new one. And we said, wait, because as soon as they issued a new one, we couldn't get the work done in time, and we would have had to reapply for it. So we're now under the new general permit, and we're, uh, they're asking us to put clay dams in. Uh, so we're, we just submitted that plan to WPI, and that's going off the You Army mean Corps. instead of call for dams? No, uh, just in the trench. The Army Corps, the Army Corps 404 uh, permit requires, uh, in the new regulations, um, on any pipeline work requires clay dams to prevent any groundwater migration to the waters of the United States. So clay dams parallel to the bank? Perpendicular, no, uh, right, perpendicular to the pipe, right. starting from undisturbed earth, going to the pipe, and to within two feet of the ground surface. So, yeah. so, so it's putting per in perpendicular to the pipe, parallel to the stream bank, so the groundwater can't get into the stream. Yes, and they have to be at least every 150 so we're going to have one on each side of the bank, and then there's probably three or four as we head up towards Ivy Street. So it's just a clay lining of the bank. It's just no. It's just if it's this is stop. oh, it's a water stop. It's it's an underground dam. Yeah. If this so is a hydraulic barrier. If this is the existing ground surface, and this is our pipe, and this is our bottom excavation. Yeah. We will put in a clay. Put in a cl clay uh, night clay dam. Every 150, each side of the bank at every 150. So, and you'll have to dewater between each dam, right? In each section of the trench. No, these will be installed as the as the pipes being backfilled. Okay. So they're staying. Oh, these place. are permanent. These are permanent. Oh, okay. it'll be it'll be a bentonite sand mixture that you know, conforms to uh, Army Corps of Rail standards. Okay, so the purpose is to prevent Prevent groundwater mi migration, migration along the into waters of the United States. That's what that's what their definition is. Rather than. Out <laughs> now, even though As if groundwater doesn't flow into the surface right, waters of the right. United States. Yeah, but we're yeah, going to a going through okay. the area and it's going around all over the place, and, but that's what they require. The, the theory yeah. is that this potentially could channel it, drain the, drain de water the, the local right. wetlands, I mean, and get the water conduit. too fast. Whereas the natural flow is gradual, but it's, it might be overkill, you know, but the theory is sound. It is overkill. Gotcha. It's, it's really to start the migration of that and also the migration from one drain base to another. But, you know, like it's, it's what we need to do to get our permits, so the plan's off to them, and we should actually have a permit within a week finally. And then we'll get a 401 right after, because DEP won't issue the 401 until the, after the Army Corps issue the 404. Uh, so we've eliminated uh, any projects that uh, the hint of maybe a 401 or a 404. We um, specifically excluded excluded beaver dams. Uh, I think one of the concerns was natural a natural dam would be a beaver dam. So those will just be under the regular uh, emergency special permit. emergency that we yeah. typically do. Yeah. Um, Change the definition of drainage to put stream. Uh, there was a concern of uh, what do we call a drainage channel, or right? so calling everything streams. 
Uh, we defined um, what we, uh, as far as in the two, category two and category one, uh, that debris in trees less than two inches and over than two inches. Uh, removed in category three, um, uh, the two bullets of removing sediments or minor stream or uh, bank erosion, which would trigger the 401, 404. And I believe that was it. So I guess one of my main questions to you, and it may be obvious, but I, I think it just should be asked, is um, does the activities proposed here, um, does this cover you know, the largest amount of your general maintenance on stormwater? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the okay. only thing it doesn't cover, and you know, rightfully so, is if we're going into you know, redirect the channel or completely uh, restore the water ca uh, carrying capacity of a channel, that would be a separate project in itself. Yeah. But all our minor, minor, uh, minor uh, drainage work within roadways, yeah. right adjacent to a roadway, are taking care of um, storm damage issues. Some of which we, uh, most of which are either. And uh, with respect to creating check out there first, or possibly if it's something a little bit more detailed or in the buffer zone, then we'd have to come back before you with a little proposal, show you how we're going to do it, and then you give us the message that way. Um, but that would be just done on a regular meeting. It doesn't have to be a formal right. posting and um, advertised hearing. It, this does not cover new construction, or does? It, it'll, it covers, it'll cover new construction in a roadway, that's all. So in addition, in addition to a system, not not any, uh, no new construction that creates a new outfall, because that's going to trigger a 401 anyways. Would this would this have covered the work on West Street by um, FST, the MWA pipe? Um, no. No. I mean, I, I think I clear. I think I, I think I said minor minor extensions. Minor system extensions. I mean, that's 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 not a system extension. It's completely rehabbing the entire system. So they're back out there. What is oh, that just MWRA? Finish? Yeah. MWRA. Um, Sorry to interrupt, but no, no, they no, no, no. Uh, they had to go back in there just really to install their uh, their their uh, blow up kit. <coughs> Manhole got installed yesterday. They started last. They they cleared snow Monday the week before. They started work Tuesday. And MWRA and FSD because they, they had their well point down, they were digging, the water was clear. As soon as the backhoe started excavating near the well point, it started being you know, silty. The controls weren't decaying it, so they instantly shut them down and shut the pump off. The tank didn't work. That's why, no, the tank wasn't there. Uh, it's this, they, it's, were doing it's the was, they were doing setup. what we did last year. Yeah, uh, they had the exact same setup, same work. place. But I mean, it's just the, the stuff was really fine. So MWRA and FST instantly shut down. They were shut down. The pump was off by, I think, 10 o'clock. Is there a tank out there now? They put the they put the tank out there, and they only need it one day. Basically, um, you know, they're deep. It's a fr it's frack tank. It's a frack tank. Is it on? Uh, it's not on West Street. It's, it's on, on West Street. Yeah. yeah. It's on West Street. Uh, their deep excavation is over. They do have some minor excavation to do to uh, replace about 40 feet of. Um, 40, 50 feet of RMLZ's electrical conduit, but those are shallow when it's above the groundwater, so they should not have to pump anymore at the location there, and they should be completed up there within a week. I'd like to I'd like to shift gears back to this permit so we can get through it. Um, um, are there any questions that uh, commission members have on this? I read the original. Memorandum? Yep. I was satisfied with the original one, and I'm satisfied with these changes. Okay. It's pretty thorough, and I think it works well for us. They've addressed um, comments we raised a month ago, so I'm yeah. uncomfortable. Okay. I move we uh, close the hearing. Oh no, we can't get people a chance to comment. I, do, I just want to. I just want to <laughs> hear if there's any other comments from other commissioners. No other comments. Um, just just reiterate the procedure for notifying the commissioner or the administrator or the commission about. When you're using this permit, if is it is it depending on the category? It depends on the category. Okay, category so one, we can do it by right. Okay. Category category two, category two uh, we would consult the conservation administrator and, and get his verification 
that it falls in the category two go over all the um, BMPs, uh, how yeah. we plan on doing the work and the BMPs that uh, we're going to employ. If he's satisfied that it does fall in that category, it's a disapproval. Okay. If it falls under category three, um, it's a little then bit that's, more that's when we uh, come before the commission and explain in a little more detail what okay. we're doing and probably submit a little handout so that you can go through it. And, then it's, okay. and that's only with the commission plus. Um, can, um, there's nothing in this notification that talks about time constraints, like, you know, at least a week or, um, you know, or can. Um, I, uh, no, but what, I, what I did or say or that there's no, no, no project in category two or three, no project until. in category two can even start until Chuck gives the blessing. And no project in category three can start until we receive okay. permission. Okay. All right. All right. I just wanted to make sure that that was close the loophole of, well, I sent the message, so everything's all set. We just went ahead, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I, and, I, and I did I did add in there's a paragraph in there that notification of a project to the, either the administrator or the commission has to be in writing. Or email. Or yeah. email, yes, yeah. and there's a little request form that we fill out, too. Yep, I see it at the end. Okay. Okay, um, at this point, do you have any questions? No. no? Any questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion? Uh, uh, let me, uh, let me answer a question, Chuck, yeah. Chuck's not here. Chuck's not here. He is not prepared a order of conditions. Not for this, now. So no. if we close the hearing, then he is a fixed amount of time to prepare the order of conditions. And if we don't have a meeting next and time, if we, don't have a meeting. we may be yeah, So uh, let's keep the meeting open, but I do move that we approve this revised submittal dated March 11th for the Town of Reading General Stormwater Maintenance Permit, file 270-0638. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? None? See? None? Okay. Um, so, a motion to continue to the next hearing so oh. that we can discuss, mm -hmm. so that we can issue the order of conditions. Yes. I'll let some others speak. Doesn't matter. We like to share the well. Sooner the better. Okay, I make a motion to continue the hearing uh, for the Town of Reading General Stormwater Maintenance Permit. File NE 270-0638 to the next CONCOM meeting. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Jamie, you uh, your approval of that? Yeah. Okay. It's here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Okay, so that was approved. I thought we were doing well. We'll draft. Let's see. Okay. 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 Notice of Intent 270-0640, 30 Whittier Road, Map 33, Lot 148. Um, Mr. Johnson is now reopened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the General Reading Bylaws, as, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present their proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and or comments to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. Um, and at this point, um, let's introduce ourselves, starting with Brian. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Jamie Mullen. Rebecca Longley. Julie Roger. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Johnson, welcome back. Um, Who's that in last week? Good evening. The week um, it, the week I'm the just going to ask you to uh, go over. We got um, 
a little bit of information from the last, since the last time we met, which was last month. <laughs> Oh yeah, February 20th. Uh, yeah. So, um, okay. Um, a list of improvements and changes to make to the plan. Okay. And uh, I've, uh, you've seen my little write-up and what I uh, sent to Chuck. I'm, I'm sure he's distributed it to you. Uh, so I was going to go over them and show you the plan where uh, where they were put in. Uh, of course, first of all, um, one of the two of the things were. Uh, a picture of the Shea Shallow Pit and the uh, field cards for the DEP. And those were attached to that uh, little write-up that, that you all have. Um, some, some of the improvements were um, the leaf debris, the major pile, which is on the side of the lot, and you know extends a little bit without, is over here, and that'll be cleaned up. It's, it's marked on the plan, as well as um, you know mar marked to be cleaned up. The 12-inch tree. Near that leaf pile in between the garage, we'll have a wheel of uh, a true well put around it. Uh, the, uh, the biggest one was the, the deck. The sauna tubes will be put at five feet, which is just inside the 25 foot line. It will have a one foot cantilever, so the deck will now be six by 16. Okay. And there will be uh, spaces um, of. Excuse me, Dave. I'm yeah. I'm looking at a plan dated January 30th. Is that an old plan? Mm -hmm. Yes, if it's not revised. Well, he didn't. He didn't change the. He has a. He has. Yeah, this is the old. Oh, okay. revised 227. All right. Revised 227. Oh, yeah. So. So you, I can see yeah. now that you pull the deck back. Yeah. Virtually within the 25 foot. Yeah. Well, it is within. He's got a cantilever. One it's going to be a one foot cantilever. No disturbances. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, at the end of the driveway, which will reduce 60 feet of impervious off of the uh, off of the proposed 1241 for the driveway, there'll be the stone stone uh, trench, so yep. that will pick up water, help get it into the ground, and it will also reduce that impervious area by 60 square feet. So instead of 1241, okay. it'll be 1181. Okay. And the Shea shallow pit to the right. Uh, what we did here was we just we turned it. Turned it. And nine that degrees. that gave me the ability to raise it up uh, yep. about eight, nine inches and still make cover and um, give you that ensure that it's that much more above the yeah, highest so water level. Okay. And that uh, there's also a note made. The the Japanese barberry, which is in back here close to where the new plantings is that, that will be removed. Uh, Rich Kirby also made note that the other um, trees, the, the Norway, the, the Norway maples, um, he felt that once the, the leaf litter was picked up and cleaned up, that those would not, that that those new plants that I would be planting would be okay, right. and those uh, Norway maples would not be hurting them. But the Japanese barberry would come out, and you know, also figuring that you guys would not want me cutting down those 12-inch Norway maples back then. They're a mixed blessing. <laughs> yeah, they're a mixed blessing. Um, sometimes they really do uh, um, kind of poison the localized soil uh, to prevent most, if not necessarily all, as my understanding, most of the natives um, don't don't enjoy being around Norway maples. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it makes it an inhospitable environment for most of the natives. There are a couple, I've, I've been told, that do survive under Norway. Um, so I, I think generally when we do, an, when we write an order of conditions, we have a, a planting part right up in there that says, you know, we'll wait until the plants are established and thriving okay. before we'll do our final sign off. Does that sound familiar? It does. Judy? Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Um, so perhaps that's something we'll do on this order of conditions. Okay. Um, um, I like the way you've you've pulled the deck back 
to being out of the 25. I appreciate yeah. that. I know it's not the world's most popular deck, but um, but I appreciate that effort. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, Rebecca, you and I were out there on Sunday, and uh, yeah, thick snow cover. We really can't see much about. Yeah. Can't see any of the vegetation, yeah. but the break of slope there. Uh, where the wetland line is shown on the plan is pretty clear. Yeah. Um, do you happen to know if the grass lawn extends all the way toward the intermittent stream? Can you sort of, do you know no, what the it, cover the gra is? No, the grass line is, is, is pretty much right where we're going to put the markets. Okay. Right. And the rest I is just... I believe I made mention of that in the, first, in the project description, the okay. first one. Sorry, that's, that's pretty, no, that's okay. That's, all right. that's, that's pretty much the, the grass line, and it's also... The existing lawn. I, I thought it was. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, it is. I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. Okay, so um, at this point, um, it looks like you've addressed most of our um, good portion of our concerns. Are there any other questions anybody has? I just, this project? Want, to, I just want to make sure that we get it included in the order of conditions and, and check in here. We ought to make sure it's in the minutes that the order of conditions include a, a condition that no healthy trees between the proposed structure and the um, and the wetland or uh, be uh, be cut down. Uh, That's standard. That's standard now. We hope so. Well, I think a couple after after construction in finished? Per, in perpetuity. After construction. Because a couple are going to be taken right, out. Right, right. There's, right. I think, four on the well, left they're not, they're side not of the driveway. They're not included in the plan is what it would, what it would have. Yeah, so not included in the plan. Yeah, yeah. The plan. Oh. That's a condition on future owners. Yeah. Okay. Because oh, okay. when, we, when we let people build closer than 30, into the 35 foot, Five years later, they come back to us and say, we need to cut down all these trees because it's going to fall on our house because our house is within 35 feet and the tree is 40 feet high. So if they, if they want to build that close to the wetland, they have to accept their trees between them and the wetland. What if they're Norway maples, then? Are we going to say no healthy natives? Um, we haven't in the past. Okay. What do you think about that? The thing is, well, if somebody want to cut in Norwood maple, Norway maple, excuse me, and um, and replace it with something, that would be fine. But if they just wanted to cut it down, I'd be opposed to that. Okay. But uh, that's just one opinion. Okay. Um, any other questions from commission members? And, and ju just to elaborate on that a little, if you do cut in a Norway maple, and you aren't um, vigilant, you know what's going to grow up in this place? I know that normal. Yeah, 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 true. Um, any questions from the public at this point? Or Mr. Johnson? No? I think the applicants addressed the uh, issues. And, and, uh, we can move plan forward. is fine to me. Okay. Rebecca? Any other no questions? Okay. Um, is there a motion to? Um, Continue this until we draft a order of conditions for it. So move. We continue this to April fourteenth. April nine. April nine. Let's call it April nine. <coughs> Hopefully everybody can be here. Um, okay. Uh, is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Now I move to issue an order of conditions reflecting the changes made in the revised 227-15 plan. Okay, I will second that. All those in favor? Okay. And I also would um, request that we have the order of conditions in advance of the meeting so we can review it completely. So if you make that note. Mm -hmm. That would be April 8th. The ninth is on Thursday. Oh, really? Well, then the date was. You sure? Um, 
like, no, that's in a different year. <laughs> this is April 2015. The 8th is a Wednesday. Oh, okay. I wonder if there, that was on purpose. Um, how about the 23rd? Is that a Wednesday? Yeah. No, that's a Thursday. That's a Thursday. Okay. Well, then my April dates are wrong. Okay, so April 8th and April 22nd. Are you going to be in town? As of right now, I am not. But things could change. Okay. Um, Allie we might need back. some more members. Allie might be back. I don't know. No, Allie's so not. Allie's May. not going to be back till May. Really? Yep. Yep. We might have to look and change it to another night if my commitment holds. Well, why don't we why don't we evaluate that a week before? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that give us enough bit. time to notify applicants? Yeah, and, and it, sh it should. Okay. It should because a week before a week puts before it before the packets. Right. Right. Does anybody else know their, uh, on the commission know their schedule that week? I'm available. I'm around. okay. I'm okay. I'm available. How about on the 9th? What, what day? Thursday. That's a Thursday? We'd have to make sure we could get the room. We, we could find a room. That's I'm available on the 9th. Maybe. Should be able to. Yeah. Well, it's either okay. the 8th or the 9th. We'll, we'll figure it out between now and then. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have any scheduling restrictions there but I, I, if the commissioners and, and Chuck too will go look at their calendars um, let's see if we can just move to the ninth now I mean in the next well, why few we, days yeah yeah I think we everybody yeah. check okay. this, this is stuff. This, so I, I mean I apologize but I just have so many things going on now that, uh, it's tough being retired isn't it I'm retired by four jobs, and none of them, they all conflict with each other. Okay, so continued. So thank you, Mr. Johnson. It's continued to someday in April, hopefully the 8th and the 9th. I'll stay in touch um, with Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Please do. Right, Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I saw Chuck leaving as I was coming. Yes. He's yes. not going to be here? Not tonight. He's not able to be here tonight. Um, Okay, so that's that, moving right along. Um, so, Mr. Hughes, welcome. Hello. Just for the record, I know who you are, but just for the record, just yep. introduce I'm yourself. Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting. Tom, can I, uh, can I ask you to please yep. put that up over there? Because yep, the camera can zoom in on it. Absolutely. Thank you. We can um, see it. Did you give us those pictures? No, I, oh. but I can email those to you from the record if you'd like. Um, I've, I've been there. I, I'm okay. there with it. Go ahead. I'm here on uh, uh, behalf of. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. I'm here on behalf of uh, Todd and Jean Jacobs. Jean is here with me. Hi. Um, Good evening. Uh, 70, Seventy-three Fairchild Drive. Um, what I provided you with was a GIS uh, map of the area with some notes on it. Um, I did a delineation of the site. The, the delineation is just so clear. It's the site has a retaining wall that runs along this portion of it, kind of peters out here. Then you have a, a clear slope change. And when you get back in this portion, it's a little more gradual. And as I noted during the site visit, the last two flags back in here, I'm a little less certain of. I put them high above some pines just to be comfortable with it, but they would have no bearing on what we're talking about. Just, um, excuse me, Tom, sorry to interrupt. Yes. Just really briefly, the wall is pretty solid until between which flags are it, at it's which It's right flags. around um, A6, A6. Where, where it's kind of dying out, which okay. is right. In Got this it. photo, it kind of loops away, from, as it loops away from the deck, it kind of disappears, and then you've got a slope change. Okay. It's, a, it's an old colonial stone wall, is that what it is? No, but this appears to be a retaining wall that my guess is is sort of original when the house was built. Mm -hmm. It looks like what they did is probably put down some stone, built a wall, you know, put down a base to construct on, 
and then backfilled, but they were probably getting close to the wetland line. And I'm guessing at that time you didn't have a 25 foot offset, so they probably went right up to the line with the wall. This was 93, the house was built in 1993. Correct. Yeah. 93. Okay. So, um, so the flags more or less follow that wall. There's a little bit of in and out because the stone fill kind of doesn't follow neatly with the wall, but it's really pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, very deep organic soils in the wetland and then coral <coughs> in the upland. Um, so along the side of the house, sort of back in here is where this photo is showing a flagstone walkway that takes you to a door in the back of the house. There's a stair that comes down that back side of the deck, existing deck towards the wetlands. If you take a look from this side, you can kind of see where the deck is in relation to the wetlands. Um, and again, here's from the backyard, kind of looking at that. And if you're having trouble seeing it, I can sort of pass that around if that's okay, any easier. Um, on your top left photo there, which yes. is the one we have in our package, uh, left corner. Oh, this one, yes. Yeah, where are those stairs? Can you point to it on that? They're right here. They're, they're coming down from the deck. They're in the shadow, so they don't really show up well okay. on that. Okay, all right. Um, but they're going towards the wetland as opposed to away from it. So, so what we're looking to do is a project that would take yeah. this existing deck, not change its dimensions. Um, it's currently, by my measure, 14 and a quarter feet from the wetland. Um, obviously, if we file a notice of intent, that would be a surveyed measurement and an, you know, absolute accurate. But it's, it's pretty close. And we're looking to make a three season room a screen, essentially a screen porch with a roof and all that. It's clearly within 25 feet. It's an existing structure. Um, my understanding from the preliminary discussions with um, the fellow who would be doing the design is they probably would want to put a couple extra sauna tubes in, within, again, sort of within the already, uh, the decks or existing footprint. The wetland line uh, along the edge, there's a buckthorn sort of almost evenly spaced, almost like it was planted there. Um, we, we were looking at, okay, what can we do to mitigate for being within 25 feet? And, and the things that, that came to mind, and I put them on the plan, uh, buckthorn removal along the wetland boundary, we obviously would propose to replace them with a suitable shade tolerant native plant. Um, you know, it could be blueberry, some type of dogwood or a viburnum. Um, I would work with the Jacobs to try to find something that they like and it fits in the, um, fits in the general characteristic of the area anyway. Um, the other item would be uh, to re direct the roof runoff from the three season room into some type of a dry well or infiltration chamber over on the side away from the wetland. Um, and then the other thing would be to relocate the existing deck stairs away from <coughs> the wetland side and over onto the other side. And there will still be foot traffic going back to the back of the building because there's a door there. But right now what this stairway does is it forces all human disturbance towards the wetland. And if we bring it to the other side, most human disturbance is not going to be going towards the wetland because my guess is most people using those stairs are not going to that door. I imagine they're going down the stairs into the backyard. It's maybe just an back access to the drive. ingress. Right. So those are the three sort of obvious mitigation okay. opportunities I saw. And if you'd like, I can kind of pass that around so you guys can get a closer look. I'm all set, but can if other people want so to, go yeah. ahead. I, I have a couple questions. That yeah. um, picture on the bottom row in the middle, you this can one. see the so existing sonnet. Yes. So I assume the three season porch floor is going to be the same elevation as the existing deck. Yeah. So you're going to have all that space under that floor. What what's going to happen, or is it going to look just it's, like that? We're going to keep it open. So that's why it's three season. You're not heating it. Correct. You're not insulating it. Correct. It's really their backyard is full of mosquitoes in the summer, and it's kind of miserable to be on the porch. So they're not really using the porch or the deck. So. So I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt for a quick second and just. Um, ask a bigger question and that is um, this isn't right now you're not proposing a notice of intent or an RDA or even a minor <coughs> project um, what are you what, what are you hoping to okay, get so, from us so what we're looking at is 
as you may know, putting together plans and all that is, is an expensive and time consuming process. Yeah. We're clearly within the 25 foot. What I was hoping to get from the commission was a feel for whether the items that we're thinking of and sort of con at a conceptual level for mitigation are consistent with what you guys look for for this type of an impact within the 25. It's a fairly minimal impact because you already have an existing deck. And clearly, if we direct the roof runoff into an infiltration chamber, we're not creating anything new in terms of impact. But it is an alteration, you know, yeah. under your yeah. under your regs. So, so, so you're wondering how we would see it as a filing, right? Because it's an expensive filing when you consider the cost of the project as a percentage. It's a huge yeah. percentage as opposed to when you're doing a, a yeah. big addition or a building or something. So, um, does anybody have any opinions? I, I do. No, okay. So Sure. So the obviously the existing decking is going to come up. Correct. The existing runners or support beams are going to come up. Correct. But you'll leave the existing sauna tubes and add some. Yeah, that, yeah that, that, that's, that's 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 the plan. And that's would it be, as far as you know, I'm, I know you can't be definitive, but as far as you know, could those new sauna tubes be put in by hand? that bring in any excavation Chuck equipment? actually asked that when my contractor and I first talked to him, it was last June, and my contractor said he'd have no problem with him doing okay. yeah. Send him over my house. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, there, there's handheld power augers that can be used that are, you know, yeah. you carry it in, two people yeah. hold them, and as long as you don't hit a roof, you're fine. Yeah. Um, and you can also do them on a, on a bobcat with a tread like very low impact and drive on plywood. I mean, we, we could propose a very, you know, a no impact from doing that and an access route to, to really From that. Uh, my opinion is if we can keep all construction activity um, away from the wetland, no closer than the existing footprint, yeah. have all staging areas outside, I think that this is a, a project that, that um, I under, under what permit vehicle? I think it, it would As be a notice, a notice of intent because he's got to file. I think he's got to file for a variance. Right. So that would mean it has to be a notice of intent. Because you can't have a uh, variance from an RDA. Now, if we consider this modification of an existing structure, then an RDA might be possible. But I'm. Is this how you've done that in the past? What? Is this how you've done that in the past? Well, we're 14 feet away. If this, <coughs> if we were um, 35 feet away, no question it'd be an RDA, right. no question at all. But it's just that question of the variance. You can't have the variance in the RDA. Yeah. But I, I guess I could entertain an argument for it to be an RDA. But I could afford a notice of intent variance based on what I know right now. I guess that was what we were getting at. It's the mitigation if we go for a variance. Or the, obviously, there, you've seen the other argument. There's an argument to say that your 25 has some right. flexibility in the language. But we could, but clearly, either way, we have to propose some mitigation that you feel is commensurate with what yeah. we're doing. And that's, that's <coughs> kind of the big question. Uh, so there's a question. RDA or notice of intent, or whether we'll, we can get it approved either well, way. Well, Chuck had thought it would have to be a notice of intent, right. um, and I don't want you know I respect his opinion on that. Clearly, I would like you know I would love it if you guys said we think this would be an RDA because it's it's less cost for the Jacobs. Um, well, not that. Um, not that much less cost. I well, think. well, it is. It filing fees. It's less. It's less paperwork generally. It's it's less you know less involved. So it, it is. We don't have to read that language for the public hearing. Well, that too. Um, some. That's for. I'm just going to say, some people have um, petitioned us for a modified fee, um, and we have listened to that in the past. Right. Um, you know, to to me, if except for the variance, and I forgot about the variance piece of the notice of intent and clearly it's within the 25 feet it does require a variance you can't get around that um, I would I would instead 
lean more towards an RDA if we didn't have that variance piece in there. But I have to agree that it would probably have to be a notice of intent. Yeah, notice. we came in with the expectation that we're filing yeah. an NOI. Yeah. I liked hearing the possibility of an RDA fit again. Now, it's not, it's not more just before we spend the money on architects and engineers to make sure that we're not going down a road that's just going to, you know, end badly. Well, I, I, I'm not suggesting this, but if you were just going to put a uh, screen and a roof over that existing deck, that would definitely be an RDA. But with the new footings and tearing down the existing deck, I, I can see a case for it. Okay. Now, if you if you take our bylaw and you separate it from the state law, do they, does a notice of intent have to be filed? If the bylaw is a separate entity, I mean the, the regulations are a se separate entity. The the do, do state bylaws don't require that variance for the twenty five feet. It's no, only no, that's our, our variance. That's our variance. Right. So what I'm saying is, why do we need a notice of intent for a variance if it's our bylaw? Because excuse me, our regulation. Because the state's notice of intent services our bylaw. I think that language is in there. Let me just double check this. Is the notice of intent is application under the bylaw as well? Right. 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 I don't think you can apply. Just for a permit under the ten bylaws. Well, you must be able to. Well, no, I, I don't I, think you can. I'd, ha I'd have to read the text because I know in some some towns, uh, bylaws allow you. They're separate entities, and then you can submit. And what they say is the submittal for the notice of intent will fulfill this. Will fulfill this requirement. Right. And That's some some actually make you submit separately. Yes, which we did away with. Right. Because it was so. But what I'm saying is the language yeah. might be such that we might be able to do that. But. Well, yeah, maybe you and Chuck could research that and see. Yeah. You know, if it's Probably. allowable by by the regulation, then it should be allowed. However, that being said, does the construction that they're proposing warrant an RDA? That's a whole separate issue altogether, uh, possibly. And so, in terms of the mitigation, though, is, am I reading the commission correctly that we, what we're looking at for mitigation is sort of along the right lines? I think so. My I, in my opinion, I think what you've proposed is is definitely is something I could clearly agree to, especially moving those stairs, <coughs> um, and you know, you're moving it to farther away, mm -hmm. um, and that's going to reduce erosion or traffic in that area, and doing some invasive control. We always love to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, it improves the habitat quality, which helps your backyard to be functioning better. Maybe you'll have more bats that'll eat more, <laughs> more mosquitoes, mosquitoes. You know, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, we, so I think the content of the plan is is sufficient. I don't. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how to. Uh, how to <laughs> how to advise you at, at this point about you know exactly what you should submit. Um, for exact engineering, you know, I'm not sure engineering. Well, well your, your engineering regulations plans are, are yeah, your regulations are clear on minimum plan submissions, and we don't envision, you know, shortcuts on that. We just will produce a plan that will show a limit of work. It will show accurately measured wetland boundary, and um, you know, we'll just put an arrow to the buckthorn control area yeah. and and yeah. things like that. I'm not worried about the plan development, and I'm not. It's more just the overall concept before the Jake has spend the money on, on designing this thing. Because, you know, when you look at a house plan, you're looking at soft costs, folks like me, being, you know, maybe 5% or more or less of the overall project. Here you're looking at being a third or half. I know. And so it's, yeah. so we want to just be careful before we go down that road that we're not just wasting money right. for something that doesn't happen. So. So I, I think we've got that. The, the other question that came up at the site visit was whether or not we need to prepare data sheets. Typically on a site like this where it's so obvious, I would just prepare a delineation summary report because the wetland line is about as obvious as you can get. You've got a wall, you've got a clear fill line, you've got you know clear soils differences. And my summary report notes those things, but it just doesn't go through the mathematical calculation of all the, the vegetation layers. So 
if the commission wants us to do data sheets, we'll do that. And if the commission is okay with a summary report, um, as we've done on other filing sets. I was the one who brought that right. up because yeah. it's, I, I see a lot of consultants not filing these DEP data sheets. And I understand your, um, your reasoning and I kind of agree with it, but what I would like to see, if you have anything of notes that you took on the soil profiles, and anything about the vegetation that you even you know if it's a log book maybe you could um, that, just that gets zero typed into, it? yeah that gets typed into the summary report okay so it's all going to be in there and actually legible if I showed you my notes you would not <laughs> you would not be able to read <laughs> it would them be bad, huh? <laughs> but that all gets typed in but I just don't go through the you know the total herbaceous cover is made up of 80 percent this 20 percent that 10 percent that okay. I talk about what dominates that layer and why I put the wetland boundary where I did and what the soils look like and things like that. You've seen my summary reports for and on yeah. other sites. But I have to say, I think for the level of effort that, um, you know, your your the pro projected project, I don't I don't envision this is going to be an enormous notice of intense middle. Right. No. You know, it's not going to have uh, stormwater drainage calculations. Oh yeah, no, it's not going to no. have. You know, it's not. Um, yeah, so. we're not going to do a test pit for, for infiltrators. You right, know. right. No, I, I, I right. get that. I just want to so. make sure we're kind of on the same page. And it sounds like we are, and I and appreciate we, we your time. Could, uh, we could also discuss relaxing some of the stamped ad fill costs. Well, I think, I think if, it's a, if it's an adequate plan, um, I don't know if I get in trouble with that, for that word, but <coughs> that maybe it's more of a subjective word than, than, I, than you would be comfortable right. hearing. Um, I think I think we you know try us out, see if it works. Yeah. Well, what I think what we can do the the architect will need to develop plans that will be acceptable for the building inspector. Those will right. be stamped. They'll be dimensioned. We could possibly take those and combine it with the GIS thing before we spend too much time on survey. But he may need, need survey to be able to do a foundation plan that's adequate for the building inspector. So let's see what we need to do for the building inspector and work off that, okay. and we'll get as close as we can to what we typically would provide you for a plan. Any okay. other questions? No? Comments? No? Any questions from the public? No. Thank Hearing you none? very much. Thanks for your Thank time. You. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Okay. Um, we have make, make sure your architect specifies <coughs> mosquito netting or screen under the floor, because if you don't, the mosquitoes come off. You're right. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, thanks for coming in. Uh, Mr. Couliard, you're on deck. Uh, just for the record, if you would introduce yourself. My name is Al Couliard. Um, developing uh, uh, Mariana Way, lots two and three. I'm here tonight. Uh, Request a uh, modern modi liner modification on uh, lot three Mariano. I did submit a sketch yep. uh, to Chuck. Yeah, I think we got a copy of it. Yeah, is that it? Yeah. Um, can you just briefly explain the reason for the mo for the modification? Yeah, the, if you look at the the ads book, which I have a copy of, if you had one, we ended up with the exact same same foundation that was proposed and approved. And we're um, 40 feet from the wetlands, but in this bottom corner right here, yep. uh, this is a, a finished basement and a walkout with a slider right here. Can you, I'm sorry, sit. sit. Right, right in this corner right here, there's a, a sliding door and a walkout. Oh, that isn't a porch, a deck. That's a finished basement? It's a finished basement. It does have a deck, as the plan shows. Oh, above it. Above it, yep. But it has a. Oh, I thought that was an attached deck without a finished foundation. But, but anyway, go ahead. So there's a, a slider there. And the grade is, uh, the topography and the grade slopes pretty significantly away from that. And uh, on the back side of the house, the grade goes up. So um, what, what we're trying to do, the, the house is sold there, and the, uh, the buyer is there's a couple of kids and then ask, well, how much of this shed will be usable? And right. That grade doesn't look like you'll be able to walk on it. So um, I said, you know, in the past I've gone and I've spoken to the board and the possibility that um, I have a lot of boulders that are on site and I thought that uh, I could have the excavator um, just place the boulders, place the dry lay there, not, a, not any type of uh, structured retaining wall, but just place the boulders along the hay bale line 
at two or three feet for about 30 feet of proximity, just on this corner right here. And that would allow me to uh, bring the grade up um, to, to three feet and get a fairly level area over to that slider. So um, it just make that yard um, more more usable. And also, there's a couple other, you know, I think when you leave a grade like that with the, with the homeowner, I think the potential for them trying to do something on their own down the road <coughs> would be great. But the, you know, they're not supposed to do that. But, uh, I think if you leave them enough usable area now, I think you'd decrease that potential. So I'm, I'm just asking, I know I did this before on Bethune, uh, the same type of situation. I had a piece of property where the slope was too great around the foundation on, on lot five that we just built a, a stone wall and filled up to the dry lay the wall and fill up to the top of the wall so, just to get a better grade. So how many feet of fill are we talking about? <clears throat> two to three. three two to three. three. So these boulders two to three feet. Yeah. And uh, fill it up. So what happens with the grade between uh, what happens with the grade at the at this end? Where, where are you pointing? This <coughs> end right yeah, it's just here. Well, what happens to the grade there? Topography goes uphill from this, so the wall will just, you know, go from three feet down to the one foot. Just Let me see where you're pointing. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm pointing. Uh, I don't know how to describe it on oh, the plan. Yeah, I don't, I don't um, have another one. At, at the far rightmost boulder, sir. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Far right? Left. Mm -hmm. Right. Left. Right. 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 You, you this mean here? Right oh, here. okay. What's all right, all right. I couldn't here. figure out why you were concerned about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, on both sides, right and left, the, the topography is higher on both ends of that, right and left, so that the wall would just feel dying to the existing ground. Um, look very natural. I, I for one, um, my initial reaction is um, it looks like there's a good amount of flat space out there right now. Um, no, there, there isn't. It's, it's almost three to one on, on the um, on the grade. And I would like to go out and see it. Yeah, you can come on. That's just my initial reaction. Same issue you have with George and, and other people, the, um, the snow though. Can't see much with all the snow. You said you, uh, is there an already an occupancy permit? For no, no, this no, building? this house is under construction. It's, it's sold. It's you're you're building it to yeah, the yeah, to the I'm owners. It to, to the owners spec. Yeah. It's not yeah. occupied. It's under construction. Yeah. I mean, we can go out there. Look. That's, that's so fine. we have a little bit of time because you can't um, go out there. Yeah, and, a little and bit. I mean, we're looking, at, uh, we're looking at early June for occupancy and you know, landscaping, grading. If we're going to do it, I'd rather do it sooner rather than later. But what, what I think that ninth meeting. I don't know if you could schedule a site walk prior to that. What what day? We can try and do that. Um, so the ninth. You're asking me what to the week. Uh, the 9th is a it. Thursday. Uh, yeah, the 9th is, is a that, Thursday. But he's that, asking about Sunday. That would mean Sunday. There's still going to be snow on Sunday. Yeah, this uh, Sunday there's still going to be snow. This whole week it's, it's... Oh, no, it's a week April 5th. Yeah. April 5th. Yeah. It's Easter. Yeah. I'm not coming out. <coughs> I'm probably not going for site visits on Easter. Yeah, no. Mike finds some Easter eggs. If we can get them to... Easter eggs, maybe. Yeah, you got Easter. Just uh, <laughs> Reese's, got Easter. Uh, Reese's Easter. Um, what about Saturday? We could do, yeah, we can do Saturday. Saturday the 4th would probably be okay. Still we could do site be. visits on Saturday. They're probably they're supposed to get real cold again next week. I mean, if the snow's gone, that would work. Would you be interested, can we move this to the second meeting in April? Which will probably definitely happen based on our current meeting <laughs> practices. Um, yeah, because... You know, instead of I mean, Easter, can we go to the 19th? And then, and then when's the 22nd. second meeting in April? 22nd. 22nd. 22nd, yeah. So if you could out before then and on the 22nd, yes. it was a... I think okay, that would be better. Yeah, that would be fine. I, but I, I mean, we don't have... If, if, you, if the rest of the commissioners are uh, want to approve this as minor, minor in nature as is without a site visit... Um, I'd, I just I'd think be a little be reluctant to approve it as minor without a site visit because we write a, are right on that 25-foot line in one spot. Okay. Well, that's just the, don't. That's my uh, arts and crafts I, I'll tell experience. You, but the, it, it, actually, the hay bales that, that are out there, Jamie, the existing hay bale line, where the hay bales and stakes got put in, is probably 
uh, two to three feet in some area inside the original hay bale stakes. So where the existing hay bales are is where I'm proposing the wall. And so that, that whole, any stones that I put down would be a, a minimum of at least one foot or two foot inside that original hay bale line. I'm already inside it. The guys who did the hay bales and silk fence kind of cut that corner. So you're saying you might be close to 35 feet? No, no, no. I'm saying that I'll be outside of the 25 for sure. It's not, it's not as close as it appears on that drawing. But, yeah, I guess I'm having trouble with inside and outside. You mean upgrading it? Upgrading it, correct. 25 Correct. Foot line. The, the hay bales that are ex existing hay bales that I'm working with on construction are <coughs> upgrading of the, the foot or two foot of the 25 foot stakes that the engineer put in because the guys who installed them kind of cut the corner there and ended up a little bit uphill. So it's not as close as, as you would think it is. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, this plan, you're, you're keeping the grade the way it was previously, right? In, in through here. No. Are you proposing? Or, no? Yes, no. yes. I'm just pro proposing to, to put in these put in boulders. A little bit more grade in that area, roughly about 28, 30 feet. And your boulders will be? A couple feet. A couple, couple feet. feet. Naturally dry laid out. I'll ensure because I'm saying you guys won't This, is, more this is kind of odd, but I actually had this done in my house <laughs> in Maine. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it was, it's all sand. And what they did is they came. <laughs> My brother in law is next door and he has these big boulders. They, my friends came and put yeah. boulders around and then they put Back a couple, in. yeah, a couple uh, loads of aluminum in. Yep. Did it work? Yeah. I've and I have grass. Um, I didn't, and, and when they did that, I didn't notice anything bleeding necessarily through, you know, because there is a, there is a, now you've got two <coughs> stones. And, and it's compacted. Well, it's, You've got the grass, stone, and then it's into woodland. But I don't see anything in. Yeah. going in there. So, yeah. and it didn't take them a long time. And, and this does not look like it's a long stretch of what he's you're proposing to do. So that would take less than a day to put those in. Yeah, I can make a suggestion too. When I was talking to Chuck about this. Um, I don't know if you guys remember um, when I was, my order conditions for this property was approved. It was approved with, um, there's some debris over the 25 foot hay bale line. And Chuck was tasked with uh, getting with me on site and right. finding out how we can make that situation right. better. So if you could approve it tonight, what I was saying to Chuck is when, you, when we get together on the debris is the day that I'll get together with this. Um, this wall and we can coordinate it so that we kind of oversee yeah. it. I'm not ready to approve it tonight myself. Uh, okay. Um, okay. I'd, well, like I'd like to, just I'd like to just see to it. Save some steps, I thought. Yeah. Um, but we, we do have a, a little bit of time. And, and one thing I'm concerned about is right here is how the grades are going to get worked out again. Because right now we're talking about one foot, three feet of fill. And if you're turning that one foot of fill into now three feet, two to three feet, like what's going to happen with the grade lines oh, in this wow. area? This, this is going, the topography goes downhill to this point on both sides. So filling in this area is just going to tie in, just going to feather into these sides on both sides. Not, nothing's going to happen. This grade right here is going to remain the same as it is today after this. It's just going to go down, and then instead of continuing down, it's just going to feather into the top of that wall and come across. Because that's going to be the 88, but if we have three feet of fill, that's like uh, 87, so you're up to 90. You're pushing that 90 foot contour to the t to the to where the stones are. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, but that's, but as you're equating it to the sides, it, it's still the same, it's just gonna feather in on the side. So the 88 is gonna go in front of that wall or meet the wall part way. Yeah, yeah. And just, you know, grade it out when we, yeah. know, we put the walls in place yeah. and grade it out. It's not pretty, pretty, pretty simple. Well, I just, it's not, though. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I beg um, to differ. I don't think it is very simple. I think, I think the additional fill, we don't, we don't know, we don't have a plan of how this grading is going to be changed. Well, yeah, we, we it, I just realized that these <coughs> grade lines in the square boxes are the proposed new grade. Mm -hmm. they're, right, not the, they're not the existing grade. Exactly. The existing grade are, are these, these dash, lines. dash lines. So these are the proposed, and with that stone wall, 
that 90 contour is going to that. Yeah, which, what line is this? For all intents and purposes, your contours at the bottom of the wall are not going to change. They're going to run right into the wall and disappear. The wall is going to bring the grade up. Well, the wall crosses 86. It goes below 86 contour. Four so you need four feet there, and make it what 90, happens if there? that's what's going to happen? Anyway. Right. Yeah. So, so that's a big boulder, but you know, if, I'm just if one the contours point. are correct, yeah, if the contours are correct. That that could be a tin issue, which is a not thing. That could be a tin issue. The reason why those contours come in, or it could be. Uh, do you know if that really happens? They're close. Is yeah. No. A, it, it does it come down. in physically? Like, physically on the side, it, it's a big, it's a big gully. It's a big hole. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. All right. So that then probably is accurate. Yeah, I mean, look at the wetland line. You can see that gully in the wetland line, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, for the uh, for the amount of fill and the grades, I'd like to see it. Um, I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more about what's going to happen there and how it's going to look. That's my opinion, but, I, I, you know, I'm not the only one on the commission. So the, the top of those stones is going to be approximately 90 feet elevation. Yeah. And then it will be flat from there to the... Um, It'll still be a little bit of a grade to the slider or walk up. It'll still be a little bit of a grade, but it'll just, it'll make it where you can, you know, walk on it without feel like you're falling down the hill. I, I would like to see the, just what the new 90 foot contour is going to look like in that backyard. If you could guess or project or... Well, I know what it's going to look like because I screw it every day. Yeah, well, if you, if you, if you, you want to... If, visualize it, you know, if you want to mark this up before our next site visit so I, I can walk there and sort of say, oh, okay, it's going to go... Yeah, I can, it's, gonna, it's just going to curve around and then it's just going to go right there. Yeah. Or is it going to keep going this way? I'll, I'll Do you know what I mean? I'll like, like I, I'll well, I'd like to see a line on a plan that shows where that 90 foot contour, go, fill contour, is going to go. Okay. You're proposing fill. Right. Yeah. You know, additional fill. I, I just want to see what the finished grade's going to look like. Okay. Okay. That. I mean, does anybody um, disagree, or is there any I, other comments? I, I respect or your uh, request to, to see. It. Okay. So we'll postpone it and schedule a site walk and we'll go to the 22nd. Yeah, at this point, I, based on our discussion, it sounds like site visit on the 19th. Yeah, that, that's and, a Sunday. Uh, yeah. 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 You guys won't, you, you like uh, the telephone company, give like a four hour window only? <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how many site visits we have. I mean, if you That's can pretty good it, for the telephone company. If you can narrow it down for me, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I'm there, you know. I just, well, we start at 9. We could put it We start at 9. We could try and put you yeah. first on the list so that we're right that, there. That would be great. Um, yeah. and that'd be awesome. Yeah. So 9 o'clock. Uh, so, so Won't be 9 because we meet at Town Hall at 9. Okay. <laughs> so 9, 10. Yeah. 10 of the time. Yes. Yeah. And I'll, I'll double check with Chuck or. Yeah. yeah, if there's yeah. a change, you get yeah. canceled or something, we'll let you know. Okay. And if we're talking April 19th, we got lots of time to make sure that communication is good. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. talk to you yeah. before that, just to make sure. Okay, so, thanks. Al, did you get your new knee? I did. How, you all right? Um, yeah. He's walking. He's walking, that's good. <laughs> walking. No infection? No infection. Great. Third time's a charm. Great. Wow. Three times. Oh Great. Good right. to see you up and around. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Um, um, at this point, the last thing on our scheduled agenda is a Timber Neck Swamp. And, um, what about artists? That's old news. Uh, old it's not on the agenda. It's not, not on the, the not, on, not here, right? So, so um, whoever's here to talk about Timber Neck Swamp, feel free to stand up and um, introduce yourself. And questions are here, yes. as always. I just want to make sure. Have you signed in? I have. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Great. And just for so, the sake of the record, introduce yeah. yourself. My name is Bryn Burkhardt. I live at 161 Belmont Street. Thank you. First visit to the conservation. Welcome, so welcome. We don't bite. Be here. Usually. Um, I didn't know Chuck wasn't going to be here. He asked me to bring a flash drive. So it was last minute that okay. he had to leave, so I apologize. It's okay. Um, 
should I, I have a, he had asked me to bring kind of a map with proposed signage for the no hunting signs. Hey, Brian, do you know um, how to, I don't know, if is it locked I could in? probably, I mean, we, do I you know, know how to? I'll at if least not, try. Already Do you want to sign Turn that on? Yeah. So I, on. can I give a quick up? With, Please. Yes, you did. On January 14th at the conservation. Yeah. Not this my first visit, but I've been watching your meetings for the past few months. Oh, I so, know. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. I, I fast forward through some of it. <laughs> so should I just preface kind of what, what why I'm here? And sure. So um, my husband, Eric, and I, went with the marshals to a town meeting in January to petition a revision to the firearms bylaw, the town firearms bylaw. And um, out of that meeting came an instructional motion where the Board of Selectmen were required to do a few things, um, one of them being investigating the Timberneck Swamp and the private parcel of land that's embedded in it, why it's there, um, come up with safety strategies for how we can make it safe for the surrounding residents um, and to draft a revision of the firearm bylaw. So that's kind of a parallel conversation that's going on with the Board of Selectmen. In the interim, um, I, I Chuck tells me he forwarded you, and forwarded you an email that I sent to both the Board of Selectmen and the Conservation Commission on February 5th. It was signed by 65 families that live around the Belmont Street area, the Timberneck Swamp area mostly, some other Reading um, neighbors and friends that come to my backyard and play. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason I'm involved in it is I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old, and my six-year-old is very active in the conservation land. He's often roaming back there in all seasons. So it was quite shocking for us to realize there, was, um, there were people possibly shooting or hunting with firearms. Um, so, when you approve the signs on January the 14th, Chuck also, I, I talked to Chuck and said, great, I'm glad the signs are approved. Um, when will they get up? And he said, maybe in October for deer hunting season. In the interim, I, you might recall at your last meeting, I had sent an email, I discovered a tree stand um, in the swamp Is when it I was snowshoeing. Now? Um, I offered to take it down, but Chuck said he wanted to come take it down. So I told him I'm happy for my husband to help him. We, we're happy to get it. He wanted to do it. In a so conversation, if you'll allow me, sure. in a conversation I had with Chuck yesterday, um, he said that he got a report that at least one stand has been removed by a, a citizen. Um, and, um, he's, and he's heard reports of other stands, and at this point, He's not sure if it's different people seeing the same stand or if there are a number of multiple stands. Wait, Chuck stands. has not removed the stand yet. Correct. So probably it's the sign I saw, the, truck, the tree stand I saw, probably a citizen saw it um, I, and took it down. I yeah. saw two tree stands. <coughs> two of tree stands. Two of I came upon two last week. I just went straight from my house on Timberneck and walked out and continued straight and I came within two, two within 30 feet of each other. And they're closer to Belmont Street than to Timberneck. We also um, found another. I couldn't tree see my house from year. where the stands were, but that's where the shooting comes from. So I decided right. to go out to see for myself what was going on, and there are two tree stands. And that we also found a, another tree stand mm -hmm. visible from our back deck last January. My husband was out walking with our six-year-old, um, and we took that down. We didn't at that point. We looked at the conservation rules. Saw that which bow is hunting your, is illegal. Which is your street? We're on Belmont Street, so this is the Oh, street. you're right on yeah. Belmont. Yeah. yeah. So we, and so my backyard backs up to this conservation. Yep. Now, I know Chuck has specific information, and, and he needs to weigh in on this. I don't know if he has yet spoke to you. Uh, you did speak with the... Um, uh, <coughs> Selectman? Is, is that, was that what you had? John Halsey? No, that, no, no. He, no he's, sp he's spoken to um, uh, Mr. Conservation Police uh, at, at the MAC conference. So he has specific information, and I'm not going to speak out of, out of turn because I don't know what the conversation was. I ended up approaching the table after he spoke to him. Um, so this particular office, from what I understand, had had um, told him some things, and, I, and like I said, that I can't remember what I had for breakfast. So I really, I, I just, yeah. so I'm not going to speak about it. But Chuck needs to yeah. speak about that. I okay. just want you to be aware that he has had a conversation with them. Um, in the interim, you might be aware, and if you don't, I have the email and a copy for everybody. The private landowner 
who owns the parcel, John Pica, within Timbernet Swamp, has rescinded, rescinded and revoked all the hunting privileges that he granted previously? We, we so. were notified through an email from Chuck about that. Okay, um, I have the email yeah. Mr. Halsey sent. Okay, so thank you. Don't you. Need that. Thanks. Um, so that means the no hunting signs that you had approved hopefully can go up around the perimeter of the swamp without issue. <laughs> so when I talked, spoken to Chuck and I said to him, you know, I would love to get these up before October because you know, we're finding tree stands. My son's out in the woods. Um, I volunteered to get a group of neighbors together to put the signs up, part of the families that um, supported that email that I'd sent you. So he said, come to the next Conservation Commission, and if you could get quotes for signs and come up with a proposal for where signs might go, that would be the next step. Okay. So that's why I'm here tonight. Okay. Um, at, and we received some information in our, in our packets. And Rebecca and I <laughs> went out into okay. Timberneck <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> and uh, we we actually came in off Charles Street, <clears throat> and we probably by the cemetery. yeah we probably walked into that private. It looks I think like so too. It, it there's a, it's a little raised. The rest yeah. of it's yes, it is. yeah okay. We were yeah. there. Now, we were looking for footprints, that's what we followed in, but I didn't find any tree stand, um, I mean, deer stands. Can you show me roughly where you folks oh, have I've been finding? Oh, I've got the, the map on my GPS. It was actually over here. I was right here when I found okay, the tree stand. Yeah. The other tree stand I found last year was about here, and I'm not sure we were the use Yeah, because we're in the conservation area. They're not up on the here, and I walked straight through, so I don't, I'm not sure if I was here. Or I couldn't see my house from there anymore, so I, it, it, you go down a hill, so they're roughly here and here, or they might be on here, you know. Okay. You, okay. If I, I think could, I sent if a I could ask a, a question, and, and I'm not being facetious, I personally have used and been part of a group that's used tree stands for, for bird watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we know that these stands are used for hunting, or are we just assuming? The reason I walked back there is because I'm sick of listening to the gunfire. So I thought, I'm going to go out and look for myself to see where it's coming from. And so I just walked straight, and I came to two tree stands. So I assume maybe perhaps it comes from the two tree stands. Um, someone else suggested it might be someone who's trapping and executing as a result of trapping, because it's one shot generally. But anyway, so I was actually looking to see if I could find evidence of traps, not that I know what they look like. Um, it was a nice day, and I didn't mind walking through the snow, but I, and I didn't see any of that evidence. Um, my phone died, so I decided to turn around and go back home, but I saw the two tree stands, and it was, you know, that area. To answer your question, I didn't know. We don't know, though. We don't know 100%, and I think, but what I have learned in the past two months in talking to the families that live around the perimeter is that they do see cars parked in front of the cemetery and people going in. Um, there's a woman who was quite active, I guess, in banning bow hunting in the swamp in 2003, which is when the, there was a bow hunting issue. And she has told me she's seen people go in, town employees, in fact. So that's probably why the tree stand disappeared. Um, so I, and you know what? It, um, so no, we don't know. It could be bird watching. But I have a six-year-old and a <coughs> three-year-old who will probably be following his lead in a few years, and I would prefer for there not to be any tree stands that might be used for bow hunting in the conservation land. And then yeah. you said the shots, single shot? Generally, in fact, the environmental police called me um, yesterday and said, have you heard anything lately? And I said, interestingly, I was saying to my husband, we haven't heard anything for a while, but this is generally what happens because it's usually November through March and then it stops. And he said, oh, that makes me think, again, it's, it's a trapper because that's the season. And I said, why would a trapper pay attention to the season if he doesn't obey the anti, you know, the ban on, on discharging firearms and the ban on hunting in Timberdeck Swamp? Why would he pay, t pay attention to the traffic um, laws? Yeah. And, you, and you've heard well, the difference the between, the, between the rifle range as well. It seems yeah. to be oh, the yeah. same Yeah, I've lived there 13 yeah. years. I know, the, I know the rifle range. The reason they would pay attention or might pay attention is the fur-bearing animals have much thicker coats in the winter. Mm -hmm. They have their winter pelts. So they would be more lucrative to trap in the winter. But th that's but either here or there. He's, he's an interesting that not worth piece anything. of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, I, so I, you know, I came up, I'm doing what it was asked to do, and I have a proposal for where signs might go. I don't think they need to go, but can I run through it, or would you prefer to just um, look at the map? 
Um, it, it looks like you're yep. proposing that they're at the red dots, um, so at the end of the street, the, where the street meets the conservation land, mm -hmm. um, and along Haverhill Street. Isn't there a turn-in on Haverhill Street I, that's I have paved? Pictures. I, I do have pictures if you want me to go do through this. Let me ask you, let me just, yes, is, is one of the signs this posted, right that's the turn-in that's paved, mm -hmm. just like almost like near next to a telephone pole? Mm -hmm. um, oh, I remember. You remember that? Yeah. Um, and you, you have a group of volunteers to be willing to install these? So I do, but at the same time, now that I've done research on signs and I have sign material here to show you, they should really be drilled in to utility poles by the DPW and not neighbors. But, uh, you know, yeah. and, and also I think you should know the Board of Selectmen have also said that they're willing to support this, and I, I, I do think it would be not an issue. But we've been told they're willing to pay for it. Yeah. That's well. great. So when were we told that? In the email that Chuck sent us. I read the email on this. Bob Lolisher said the selectmen will pay for all the signs. I missed that part. I underlined it. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So with Haverhill, or with Charles, um, there's 13 utility poles here. It's about two tenths of a mile, and I, I, you know, I think at least two, possibly three, mm -hmm. could go here. And then, as you said, with the in the turn in here maybe yeah. that one would suffice Your parking I, space right i did put another one here because there's four utility poles maybe okay. have i mean i don't know that you need one at the end of it you could you could possibly have up to 11 signs i definitely think at the end of the street here and possibly on ivy lane and then maybe you could even just go every other street but um, these would be all these places are potentials for signs to go and what, from what I saw, and I do have pictures to accompany the slideshow if you'd like to see them, there it would be, it looks like it could be a possible um, entrance. Yeah, could, I, it, it's an access point. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to go for a walk in Timberneck on Sunday was um, nice to follow, <laughs> yeah, first of all, it's a good time of the year to walk in Timberneck. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get really filthy mucking around. Um, and secondly, to see where the traffic is, you know, all season <coughs> traffic. Um, and, um, you know, I think the best, if, if we really had a good handle on the entrances and exits that are commonly used, then clearly signage needs to go as close to there as possible. Um, yeah. What are the question on um, uh, going down Kitman? Libby? No, oh. Libby Ave. The, the um, streets to the right, it looks like the street goes down and, and ends at Timberneck, yep. but on the streets on the left, is there, is there some kind of a, a, a fence or do you know exactly yeah, I, where? I have no. pictures, I'm, but it's just a, it just stops, it's just trees. No, there's no fence. But the, it looks like there's a, a a distance between the end of the road and oh, then sorry. timber No, actually, just go straight into the woods. If I, again, I'm happy to show you the pictures. The, 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 what the map shows is what the, where the pavement ends, so there's still wooded or grass areas beyond yeah. that. There's no, there's no fencing there. So the, it, it just shows trees. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like Ivy Road, I'm familiar with, and it the road ends in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So should we look at the pictures, or would you prefer uh, to skip that? Let's, um, what would anybody interested in seeing the pictures? I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of it in, um, in I mean, my drive, and I appreciate okay. the effort. Yeah, that's I, fine. I, I that's really fine. appreciate the effort. They've gone to a lot of effort. I think we just send this map to the selectmen and say, put them up. We, Our, and, we recommend and, that and you We put were them talking up. about, you know, something along Charles Street. Mm -hmm. Right. I think, I think you're oh, on yeah, the road. Yeah, you definitely yeah, need some definitely. Charles yeah. Street. I, yeah. I mean, I think they, the neighbors know the access points at least as well as we do, if not better. Yeah. And they've done the work. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like to see the pictures, but I'd also like to get home. Are, yeah, they, I do. <laughs> I, I, I are they accessing this area off of Belmont Street? I don't think so, because okay. those are all private. I mean, unless somebody grants somebody access to go through there, the backyard. There is a bridge over that stream in the back. Somebody's had to Belmont. That's my friend Tina White, Chris and Tina White's house, and they don't let anybody go back I there. Think we so. can, isn't that new, there are new access area though, be, be uh, a right of way? Where, that? Where, where they're putting the new water main, we're putting a water main right through their yard. Okay. Okay. That's Salem Street. Is. 
George Hill. Is that no, Salem Street? Belmont, and I think it connects somehow with Libby, doesn't it? <laughs> it goes to Ivy. Ivy. It's going to go from Belmont Ivy. to Ivy. It's going to go through the across it's that gonna street. It's going to go through along the property line of uh, Mr. White. Yeah. Right through here and connect yeah. over. Yeah. So that's through in their here. property, so we really don't need a sign there because right. no one should really. Yeah, the broken on one side and yeah. the other side. Well, we're, repo we're required to put bowls and everything else there. I mean, too. Yeah. We, we really don't have a right to put signs on private property. Right yeah. So it's not it's not town property. Obviously. It's not right. town property. Well, the green is yeah. town property. Um, Behind their house is private. Right. Right. right, but there's no access, right. public access. Unless right. he's, he's right. the one putting up the tree. Well, well, and I, I do want to say it looks like the southernmost dot on Haverhill looks like that's on private property. So maybe that should be moved uh, back to conservation yeah. land. Yep. Well, if it's on the street, it's on the street. I think it's on the street. Oh, if it's on the street, okay. Property. Okay. How about streets like Pittman and um, other streets off of uh, Abel Street? I walked Pittman, and that to me looks like Belmont Street. It was it's all private homes. There's unless you go through somebody's yard. Does the end of Pittman no there's go two. into the woods, or is that end of somebody's there's driveway? Homes. <clears throat> yeah, there's okay. homes. There's homes. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I did the whole thing. <coughs> I'm good with that. I'm just get Chuck to draft a letter to the selectman saying. Uh, you have to, and, and do you have to approve the type of sign, though? I'd like to see what you have proposed for a sign because okay. I think the language has to be. Yes, sir. Uh, Walter F. Marshall, Lady yes. Kimmonick, uh, yes. Is, can you put signs on a utility pole? Does the town own the utility pole? RMLD RML does. Okay, and then uh, on Havel Street is a sign that says. Uh, the uh, Great Timonex Swamp. I think there should be a sign on that good sign. Idea. And on Charles Street. Yes, and on Charles yes. Street. That's right. a good idea. Right. The next yes. Sign. That's what I meant, Charles I, Street. That's a good Charles addition. Street. Yeah, there's a tree that goes right behind that sign where you could put it, but it's set back. Yeah. 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 Okay. The town probably has an agreement with RMLV because you see town no parking signs and things. So, well, so and all the speed limit signs are there. They are. I forgot that he's already paid attention to those. <laughs> Sorry? I just forgot it was RMLG. I thought it was NSTAR or something. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, the Verizon polls. Okay, the language of the polls. Did you so, have something? Uh, I proposed to Chuck no hunting per order of Reading Conservation Commission, but whatever you want to do. I don't think I did different colors because I just didn't know. Who gives that order? Is that the Board of Selectmen or is it? No, we have already banned so hunting okay. on that land. Yeah. And I, I would uh, suggest we add to that uh, uh, a phone number, you know, for information, uh, contact, uh, and put Chuck's phone number. Chuck's phone number. Yeah. No, no. Just in case, I think in case residents we're trying want to, to call. Well, yeah, I want to know Report. what is allowed, and I don't know, just get some contact point. I think it'd be a good but idea. But I think they could go home and look it up. And I think we should promote the uh, people using it here. That looks very negative, as it should, to keep hunters at it, but we want to encourage people to do other things in that property. Mm -hmm. I, would, I think I, by saying no hunting, you encourage lots of activity. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. You can make that point, too. <laughs> so. I mean, on the signs, don't we have I don't think we contact have our, information, no. like where you enter a conservation land? No. Yeah. We don't. No, it just says it's town conservation land. Uh, it, Do you mean like the my hikes too? I haven't seen any t telephone numbers. Yeah, things that yeah are I think I'll leave that off. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I was just going to say at the town forest that you know stapled to trees, they usually have like the little like rules of the rules, right. but there isn't. But there isn't yeah, a you know if you have questions, call right. on it. It's just these are the rules. Yeah, keep it simple. Yeah, um, I'm all for that. Maybe a town How about if we say for uh, restrictions and use rules in this property, contact and put something there? I Conservation. Keep, I want to keep the sign cheap. <laughs> yeah. The well, less we're wording, not the better. For it. Especially because, yeah, we are. <laughs> we're right. all paying <laughs> right. for it, actually. Um, um, I just think the simpler, the better. It's uh, right. Keep it simple. People won't get confused. They won't say, Oh wait! I could call somebody and argue this. Um, you know, um, I think I think just keeping it simple. Um, it's. I mean, this is just me. I, it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, any. Um, just this is just my opinion. So I'm not speaking. You know, as chair, just my opinion. 
but I what I envisioned a sign for this, I envisioned like your typical street sign, white with red, <laughs> white with red, no hunting, right? Yeah. <laughs> like just simple. Um, uh, but that's but that's this good. This is a 12 too. by 18 sign, which is what was recommended. So I posted yeah. in the Reading Parents Network. Where do you go get your signs made? I got four or five um, answers. I went to all those people and got a quote. So this is awesome. Reading recommended by the Reading Parents Network. Um, this is a sample like a 12 by 18 sign, and this Great is the sign. type of aluminum they recommend to mm -hmm. go if it's going to yep. go outside. And the type of, you could either choose to be reflective, if you see this material is obviously reflective, or non-reflective. Yeah. Um, but the thickness that they recommended was this. Is there a price like, difference know. between reflective versus non -reflective? There is. There is. It's a, Yeah, and it's about a $20 yeah. difference per sign. I would go with reflective, though. I would, too. Yeah. yeah. Especially if people have flashlights and they're walking through, it would catch their eye. Right. Um, not, I don't think they're supposed to be there after dark anyway on conservation. I don't think so. Right. <coughs> but we do, that is where we have heard what appear to be sound like gunshots usually. That's when you're hunting. Right. It's against a lot of hunting. <laughs> Not coyotes. Yep. Oh. Hmm? Not coyotes. Yeah, yeah, coyotes. coyotes. So, I've never seen a coyote hunting. But. <laughs> so, um, so at this point, um, so what, what we are asked to do tonight is to come up with uh, agree on signage, the location, and what it says. Um, so, um, so I want to hear everybody's opinion about this. Aluminum, reflective. Um, any objections to those? And this is just a recommendation to the board of selectmen. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, a recommendation. Um, I think I think aluminum, the reflective, would be helpful, but I don't think it's essential. Um, like. Jamie said, if, if they're not, if they're out there at night, you know, even if they do have a flashlight, they're going to see it if it's not reflected. Mm -hmm. it's good. If it's a bright colored white background. If they're coming at, at night to hunt, they're not going to pay any attention right. to it. So <clears> yeah, way. but at least the signs are posted for the sake of um, Rather than a white sign, like, like a general street sign, I prefer it yellow. And it, that's the, what I generally see. On yellow for caution. That's usually yellow. Yeah. Red. It's trying to do like a muted yellow, yeah. not like crazy. Red, muted. red, yeah. black, black lettering on red. You can't see really well. What? Yeah, yellow white and yellow. Can. Yeah. High contrast. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, yellow. I agree with that. And question. What, what? Well, if this isn't go ahead messing the whole thing up, is there a symbol for no? You know, sometimes you get a, a glyph with a red line through it, rather than you know. I'm wondering if there was. What something with a gun? Picture? And a, a pic yeah, a no. picture with. <laughs> do you have Do you have a suggestion, Mr. Seymour's? MUTCD standards, the universal I for recognizing no hunting. There is a circle with a line going through it. I don't know what the symbol is, but there is. Hmm. What's it what is MUTCD? What is MUTCD? Manual Uniform, Uniform Traffic Control. Traffic control it's devices. federal regulations okay. which we have to abide by in the signage. Hmm. So we get a cool. discount if we use that? No. <laughs> No, you probably have to spend more. No, it just makes it, <laughs> no. it, makes it, makes it <laughs> formal. In your name? Yeah. Makes it official. Um, I mean, they, they may have a symbol, but you, you don't have to put a symbol on. Yeah. You can put yeah. whatever language you want. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm in support of the aluminum signs, but I would hate the uh, cost to delay or deter the selectmen from doing anything. So I think our letter should be worded that we would favor the aluminum signs, but we would support uh, any signs that worse like as well as put up. Any cost effect. Yeah, as long as it says You're right. no You're hunting right. Hunter right. order of right. you know, with a yellow background yep. like, right. and a well, red black, black on it. Black what is it? People speak English. I don't see any reason yeah. to use it, but that's what the symbol is. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. 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 I saw it. Brian showed me on his yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. So and it shows a no. stick I man saw, holding I something. I, have seen. Stick I actually haven't seen right. that. Great, can I just say it? Oh, sure. Maybe I should follow this. Oh, I like it. 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 I
Um, I mean, I can just are you going to present, have you or will you present this to the selectmen also? No, I was at the selectmen meeting last night. Our, my issue with the selectmen right now, we're focusing on the instructional motion. Um, I did send them an email um, <laughs> a couple weeks ago letting them know I'd be here yeah. presenting and that I would hope that I didn't have to give you the compliments. Well, I'm, I'm happy to approve the plan. Um, are, th are there any other questions or comments from the public at this point? Um, or from the commission? No. So I'm, I'm content to approve the plan at the locations shown um, on that map. Um, some some large sign, roughly the dimensions that you you've said, um, metal would be preferable. Um, yellow background with the contrasting red, uh, black lettering, and. Um, does it, can you hold it, the word again? again? Sure. Yeah, I just want to read and it. This, I mean, this is just, it could be no, laid out differently. Yeah. I just no, that's kind of did great. It on the PowerPoint side. I think that's fine. Do you mind showing? No, yeah, I can. Um, just for the sake of the audience. So I move we. Um, Should we write a letter to the yes. board? We do. We do. Okay. We need to, do, we need to <coughs> sort of um, take some of your information. Summarize it in a letter to the Board of Selectmen. So if you'd like to give it to me, um, yeah, I'll hang on to yeah. it. Um, and would everybody like a copy? Or would um, if, if you guys would. I don't need one. I'm good. Okay. We can recycle that. I'll recycle that. Okay, okay. okay. Recycle okay. This is what I sent them, um, yep. letting them know I'd be coming. And then that's the 65 families who supported my earlier email, Great. of which you have a, Great. probably have a copy, but I added okay. a copy. Actually, I will. Sure. I'll take one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and. So, um, so we will um, send along our recommendations Great. with all these details to the Board of Selectmen. <coughs> Would um, I, should I leave these signs for Chuck? Yeah. Yep, Chuck, is, I'll, I'm holding his yep. material today. Um, and once we get those printed up, you know, fabricated, we'll get them out there, hopefully sooner rather than later. So on average. Have, have we ever put those signs up at uh, Casting Field yet? I can't answer that. Pro probably not. They're not I there. And it's that. been three no, years. Yeah, we have them. So if and, they're, and they're reflective material, too. I can probably see them. <coughs> <before. laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you so for if, all your So if we don't dog this, it won't effort. happen. Excuse me? Let's see if we can get the Casting signs put up the same time. <laughs> Well, that's a side right. issue, but we should get them up. Right, right. You can drop that letter in there. Um, was there a yellow that I'm missing? I have a right Oh, okay. Line. Can I ask, um, just so Please. I know what to expect in terms of a timeline? It, um, Thank you. Do you have a like a goal by or a timeline by which you could say we definitely have the, the letter written to the Board of Selectmen? I don't know the selectmen schedule off the I don't remember it right now, but I, I, you know, I'd like to, I would like to get this to the next available selectmen's meeting. Um, it's two weeks. It's in two weeks. Yeah, because the last one was just last night. That's great. I just, I will plan on being there. And I would like to, and, um, and I, how would we get the word out to interested? I mean, it'll be on the selectmen's agenda probably that, you know, they're going to vote on signage. So mm -hmm. it. You know, so keep an eye out. Do you know how to access their agendas? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then all yeah. those, yeah. we were a lot of people yeah. here last night for the meeting. But, um, so okay. We'll get them in. Okay. Next meeting, too. Okay. Thank Great. You. Do you want to, do you want to hand over that, the medal, too? Or do you want to hang on to that? Sure. The, do you want to have the medal? I'm just thinking the whole package. Yeah, you know, we I don't can, think the sign should have to belong to that, so I think we're good. What are we going to, what are you going to do for the medal? This would be, you know, I'm going to give are, you just, just to show the selectmen. This is, they don't yeah. Need oh, are you going to the selectmen's meeting? It can if you want, but it's. If it's here, it's available. Or if you'd like it, it doesn't matter. I guess it. I want it to be used. So if it's after it's done, I'm sure they're not yeah. going to want to keep it. Right. We'll come back to you. Okay. Yes. Just so you're going to the selectmen's meeting. I will try and make it to the selectmen's meeting if anybody else is willing to go. Um, I encourage you. Um, to also go. Yes. The process is the selectmen approve that because they fund it. Because they fund it, right. And then from there they determine when this will take place. And right, right. Um, and so that's why my email so to them, it said we'd like I mean, to we, see a 
sufficient. At, at a previous at a previous meeting, we have already approved that signs be put out. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. So now we have now we're at the getting it done. We just need some money. Right. right. Um, the map that shows the locations can. Yes. Um, you email that to Chuck. To Chuck. Yeah, I'll do that. Great. Because that's the missing piece. <coughs> Great, and that's probably the most important piece. You know, I had thought I'd print it out. Oh, anyway, you get on with Thursday. If thank you. Yeah, thank I thought I had it. I'll just for coming out and rallying the neighborhood support. And uh, thanks. And um, hopefully, we'll see you at the selections meeting. Look forward to it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your help. All right. Thank right. you. Thank you. you know, uh, if I could make another request, you seem to have a very active uh, group. <coughs> If anybody in your group has the expertise or the interest, we are actively recruiting new members to the Conservation Commission. So I've been huh? sending an update, and I, when I send the update letting them know about next month's meeting, I will say if anybody's interested in the Conservation Committee. It's three-year term? Two-year term? Three. It's three-year, or you can resign you after one. Want. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take you for a few weeks. A few meetings will be good. It's got to be at least a month, a few weeks, or so barely get to a meeting. What are the prerequisites, though? You must pay's not too good, though. Uh, uh, can you breathe? <laughs> there's a lot of interest in natural resources in the town, and, you know, there's all different, there's a variety of backgrounds that we have, um, and you can eventually come up to speed with all the regs and all the rules. Okay. We've had attorneys on the board. We've we had, had teachers. We've teachers, had like engineers. You know, biologists. Biologists. Chemists. Chemists. Um, you know, we've had trails people. We've had, you know, interested parties. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Okay. Um, where are we? Artists. We're going to do artists. Come artists. On. We should. We should get to that. Where's what's next on yeah. our? Yeah. Artists. I knew I had it. A printout. <laughs> Wonderful. Sorry. I'll just put it. I'll just put it with the, with the pile. Thank you for coming in. Yeah. Have a good night. All right. Um. Not if it was okay. Just a artists, one. yeah. We're all here for artists. Yeah, that correct? one's going to be expensive. Uh, uh, I guess basically I want to report that artists are set to move forward here after some period of time. Uh, as soon as the weather permits, they hope to start construction. Uh, as a consequence of the actual construction drawings, there's a slight variation with footprint. Uh, I think you have some material on it. We do. Uh, yep. And the meetings that we've had with George and with uh, Chuck and with then before the planning commission has approved yeah. it as being insignificant as far as the changes are concerned. Uh, so we, we're hopeful at this point. I, I think that administratively to authorize uh, the administrator to say it's, it's insignificant. Mm -hmm. But we're here to answer the questions you have. I think there's one oh, question. That you said, I thought we said any changes had to be approved by the board. Am I misremembering? I thought the letter I got suggested that it was uh, he was authorized to make a judgment that it was insignificant uh, by way of the nature. <coughs> well, we're here anyway. Right. Um, he, his letter was of uh, March. Yes. 17th. The March, the March 17th at one of the meetings. Perhaps you weren't here. February. Um, so a letter was sent to them on March 17th. So that would be the uh, probably the March 12th meeting. We didn't have the March 12th meeting, right? Right. So that would be so the February 26th. We all went here. Mm -hmm. so that would be the February 26th meeting, correct? So, but it does say um, <coughs> show changes. The plan revised February 2 show changes to the order condition approved plan, but they're considered an insignificant plan change. And uh, I think you have a memo that Bill did both for the Planning Commission, which had more than wetland issues, and yeah. that relate to you and just to outline what they are. Bill, first run the project engineer is here. If you want to ask him any particular questions. Uh, the one thing we thought that you wanted to uh, resolve tonight was whether they will or will not be aware. Um, and there's some, if you recall, that was a, yeah. yes. That was a, yes, the that was the, that was the, um, and there's some concerns from the engineering perspective. So 
I think George and Boris have worked this issue and Bill had. And, uh, we, we understood that the, the general change is acceptable. The side issue is where there is media and not the media. And it's probably the other provider that we're doing it. So we just wanted to get this done so we can move on and proceed with the project. So that's pretty much what we are as far as our is concerned. But I don't think we, if, if I remember correctly, we left the question of that wetland creation open and that you would submit an uh, overall plan for the creation of the wetlands for that area that we would then approve. Actually, they've, they've actually done work out there with reference to There was an order for the uh, the cooking property next year. Right. Separate order, but that was in the same wetland. They've already done that work. Um, That's the driveway modification? The driveway modification. Right. So the only question, and I think the order issued approving the plan was shown, uh, there was discussion of whether or not there'd be calculations that were presented in a general sense to show some negative impact from the removal of the air. Uh, but I don't think there's anything really open beyond that. Bill Burris, Ron, Case Engineering. Yes. The wetland replication areas were all on the approved plan. And the only thing that we're, I believe, that we're talking about now is the creation of this weir. Part of our plan was the removal of this driveway right. for this house. The driveway so was going up to the house that was in the back. It was and the culvert down. under the driveway, correct? Culvert under the driveway stays. That was part of the hydraulic control, and that's in the the wall. The wall, it, the wall was to to replicate the grades of the driveway through that section. If we remove this and we move the hydraulic control where that pipe is going across, this part of the drainage is actually working like a retention basin. If we remove the hydraulic controls by here, it's going to let this water flow directly into that and it's going to act uniformly. And <coughs> the grade differential between this and that is a couple of feet, and with the overtopping of the wall, it's another couple of feet. So there's a significant amount of storage that happens here that's created by this hydraulic you know, impediment that's there. So that's why we wanted to just mimic that, but take the impervious area away and then and convert that driveway. So that was what we were talking about. Is and then the state has a the state actually well, has I, a Well our our objective was to connect those two wetlands so they'd be continuous. Right. And we wanted an engineering control to maintain the amount of storage that that upper basin provided. But we wanted the two wetlands connected. Well, they're connected by the pipe, but they're uh, not No, we wanted to connect them by uh, uh, wetland vegetation. It, it's not going to happen because you can, you got a, you got a, a three-foot gradient between one side and the other. It's not going to be. And, and if we have a three-foot gradient between the invert of the upstream wetland and the downstream wetland, where, what's the invert of that culvert? The invert of the culvert is uh, <coughs> it's 103.97. The pond surface elevation here was 105.3. So you're telling me that a wetland, a culvert two feet below the pond surface is a restriction? When this flows, yes, when this flows, it goes through that pipe. The why, why drive, isn't it, the driveway, why isn't driveway. it dewatering that <coughs> up, upper wetland now? Why is it watering the upper wetland? Why wetlands? isn't it dewatering the upper wetland now? Because there's there's some wetland, there's a, the pond where the actual pond stays, and then it goes down and there was a ditch there. And if you if you look at the, there's a, actually an easement that's on our plans that shows the state drainage system that's supposed to be they can go in and dredge that. I mean, that's actually a state drainage easement that goes through the property in that general direction. And, and it goes through there, and they, they install that pipe. But the pipes on, on the outlet side here is at 103.97. There's a ponding area that's 105.3. There are some surrounding wetlands that go <laughs> up from there along the edges of 106, 106 something. And then if they go on the other side, everything is going downhill in that general direction. 
it was never, from everything I've read, there was never the intention of making this line go to that line and that line go to that line and making this a contiguous wetland. That, that was our objective, to make that a continuous wetland. Well, there were, we did additional wetlands over and above the wetlands that were there. This is an additional wetland, and this has got to be a wetland, but it's a wetland that's going to be from this side to the wall. The wall's going to be there, and this wetland's going to go <coughs> that way. So there'll be a wetland there. So the only separation between this side and that side is going to be the barrier of the wall. This is wetland replication. What is that wall constructed of? Concrete, reinforced concrete. Okay, um, can I can I interrupt for a second? Please. Because I remember this discussion previously, and in the attachment to the order of conditions. Now, granted, uh, this is my handwritten, marked up copy during the finalization of it. Um, there was a condition. Um, that said wetland creation area C. Do you guys happen to have the final order of conditions? I, I don't with have you? it with me. Okay. Um, hopefully, <coughs> hopefully I'm reading this accurately according to the final order of conditions. That the third area, replication area C, is located between the pond and the larger wetland system, taking away the gravel driveway in the area. This replication area will be an extension of the larger wetland from approximately wetland flag 108 to 109 as part of wetland <coughs> creation. The applicant proposes to remove 70 feet of the existing gravel driveway that separates the two bordering vegetated wetland and replaces it with an open natural channel and associated bordering vegetated wetlands and natural vegetation. The open channel will convey the flow currently contained in a culvert under the driveway and include a weir which can pass a maximum flow at the current capacity of the culvert. The daylighted channel has a natural meander and will be the approximate invert of the existing culvert. Natural vegetation planting and the wetland seed mix on each side, grading from wetlands plants to upland plants, vegetated slope should be not steeper than four to one. The zone of natural vegetation must extend a minimum from the end of the approved paved area of the neighbor's driveway on the east to at least 25 feet from the daylighted channel on the west. If the town engineer's hydraulic analysis demonstrates no need for a weir to regulate discharge, no weir will be required. There we go. So where's the open channel? This is, a final this, plan this detailing is, all aspects of this phase will this be submitted. Here, and this is what you were just reading about, <coughs> wetland C, which is the removal of this driveway. Right. It was part of the order that we added this language, because this was originally not part of the original plan. And there was the additional wetland area here as well. Right. So these two were done. So. Like I said, this but where is, is that open channel? What you just this, described. This, this is the this weir is this is the channel that goes through where the state is, and where that meets that, that's where the pipe is. That's going to go, and it's going to be where this location. But is this here. calls for an open channel through that area. That's what Anika just read. Except unless the town engineer determines that the weir is needed. Is not needed. It's not needed. So we wanted a weir, that's that's fine, but it has to be an open channel. How can the weir be an open channel? You put a weir in an open channel. Like a V-notch? Like a, a low weir? The invert of the existing cover is four feet below where the top of the driveway is. Well, I mean, you had this order of conditions. It's very clear. That has to be an open channel through there. Well, this I is think the open channel pot over here, <coughs> and this is what's the, the grade control. of the height? What's the what's the height of that? Well, where it's, where 106, it's 90, 106, 106, 94. 106, 94 at the top of the existing driveway. But that's the top of the weir. That's the top of the weir. Right, but that's that not was, the top of an open channel. 
that was to mimic the existing conditions to make this be the hydraulic control for the, all of this in the back. Right. Um, okay. um, if you'll excuse me, go ahead. Can I just ask the question? Yeah. Um, Bill, what's the current surface water elevation on the southerly side of the driveway, what was the driveway, compared to what the surface water elevation is on the northerly side of the driveway, existing conditions? Well, the surface water elevation. I thought, did you, I thought you said there was a three foot difference. It was 105.3 is where the pond level was mm -hmm. on the day of the survey. You know, I've seen it dry and I've seen it up. Right. It, it goes up and down. What's it on the other side? And on the <coughs> other side, there's, it's grades there. there uh, well, the invert of the pipe out is, at the ditch is 103.97. The top of the driveway which is where uh, hydraulic control would make it go, is a 106.94. So effectively, you have the existing driveway that was act that active dam, and the culvert below was the orifice controlling the outfall from the dam. Right. Now, the, the, the pipe is a 12-inch pipe. It may only be an effective size of 6 inches right now, but there is a, there, there currently exists a difference in water elevation that's being controlled by that driveway. If you re whatever that drive in normal conditions without it without it meeting the driveway, uh, from what Bill was just saying, I believe it was a foot and a half. During a storm event, it could be almost three feet higher. So if you remove that driveway, or as they're proposing now, remove that weir, the wa the water elevation of the wetland on the northerly side of that driveway is now going to be a foot and a half higher than what it currently exists right day which could flood homes in the area. And, and that's what the purpose of the weir was. If, if I can just go to the board. No, I understand, but there has to be some sort of control right. there. That's, that's I fine. mean, there that's may be, like, as concept, you said. concept, this is what we approved, and I think it's consistent with what I need to just read. Mm -hmm. We have the upper wetland here. Yep. And we have the lower wetland. Which is right. Down here, like this. And there is, there was a driveway with. It's still there. A now, pipe isn't going it? through. It hasn't been, it hasn't been dug Correct. out yet. We didn't put the wall. Like that. We, we've taken pipe. What? We, when we what? did the driveway for. I'm sorry, Jamie. For the adjacent property. Right, we, right. You did, we, you did, did remove take a little out. bit of it. Right. Okay. Okay, so th that's existing condition. What we approved, what we discussed at length, was constructing an open channel with a natural meander that made it from the upper wetland to the lower wetland, like this, and with a weir in that open channel to regulate the flow. To regulate the flow. And it could have a small opening. To, to at the bottom and then a weir elevation to make sure we maintain the storage of water. And maybe I'm misreading that plan from what, what I see, I do not see that open channel. I don't see the wetland vegetation that was in the order. Except, what does this look like in cross section? In cross section, under the existing condition, this is kind of what you have. The top that's of the, the road, road and that's, that's the culvert. So, this is controlling the flow going to the north. This is, you know, three, four feet higher than that. So, you want to make, I can't do an, a V-notch weir that's going to be doing that. Yeah, you can have a hole in the weir, it doesn't have to be a V-notch. Well, that's what we, we have. But do you have that channel? I mean, Bill, the, the order of conditions is very clear on no, the channel and with I, the wetland vegetation. But I don't know how you do an open channel with the weir with a three-foot section like this. We had it and discussed it when we approved the order. But that's but why that's me, why the order, I mean, that's why this wetland C was specifically <coughs> to the face of the wall this way. I don't know how you can have an open channel that's going to be three feet high with a to do what you want it to do. <laughs> you have to, you you have slope, to slope it back. You can slope it back. You slope it back, Bill. We've had this discussion when we approved the order. We went up there and we drew these slope channels. Let me, uh, let me 
and you can slope the side. Channel, yep. Yep. concrete structure, yep. low control, and whatever you have to do to the top. Right. Well, let me let me just say the. I mean, you make us you make us like a concrete spillway right in the middle, but rather than a spillway, I mean the spillway is to regulate the top flow, and you have to put you have to put some orifices in George. orifices in the concrete. But how, I don't know how that's different than that. I, we don't see the channel. That's the main difference. How do you? This is all concrete. So how is this not going to be? A, this is all going to be concrete here to hold that. The orifice doesn't work if this is all open. Let let me uh, if you excuse me a second. Let me just take a step back and just ask George. Um, it says if the town engineer's hydraulic analysis demonstrates no need for a weir to regulate discharge, nor no weir will be required. I did not perform a hydraulic analysis of the site. So we don't we, know. We leave that up to the developer's engineer to prove to us whether it can or cannot be done. We have not done an analysis of the entire site. And well, I, what I mean, we did. We'll accept the weir. We're not trying to stop you from building the weir. You want the channel. We want the channel. And we want the slope we'll size and the wetland vegetation. The, structure in the, middle of it. the weir we, goes across the channel. If you put a ch that channel in, the weir is only 12 inches wide. It's going across, and it the grades up to the wall on one side, are butting up to the wetland, and on the other side, they're butting up to the wetland to the north. So, the weir that's going across is just in one 12-inch wide section. It's not. It's not 20 feet wide or 15 feet wide. It's I, I, I realize that. Wide. How long is the channel? I don't know, it looks like it's about 35, 40 feet. <coughs> and that channel is where, basically, where the road used to be. It's the southern edge of where the road was, yes. Okay, okay. So the replication area in your plan is additional wetlands on this side. No. This is concrete, to the yes. north. Yeah, this is all wetland replication. It's additional wetlands here. Looks like a wide channel there. Maybe a wide channel. Jamie, what I think what Bill is trying to say is rather than do a, a stream going through, this is, they brought the wetland this, right this up to the down, structure. Right, just, right, just right up to the edge here. of the concrete. Right. right. So <clears throat> the weir is gonna is just basically this piece of this. But this lets this function the way it does now. Right, and we're not we're not arguing about that. But this why does the to maintain the same hydraulic control weir have to be that long? It, it's just to make sure that the, that this side functions the way it functions now. Right. So what you're saying, Jamie, is you shorten the weir. Shorten the weir and have have um, the graded sure. into natural natural wetland and upland gra wood vegetation. You're saying you graze instead of you know pull, pull, you pull the weir right. closer to closer to the main street. Yeah, we had envisioned a weir, you know, four or five feet long. That is how long. You'd lose some of the wetlands they're replicating though. Yeah. Well, well they, no, that, that, the, the additional ones they're creating. So that we could bring the wetland grades into the wall. If I could shorten that to there, now, now I have nothing to grade against. Well, no, you could put in, um, you could just put in uh, loam and, and vegetation. Right yeah, but, we are. but we were creating a wetland. I'm not going to get down low enough to create a wetland if I have to have the elevations up without the wall. You, you could replace part of that wall with with fill and, and um, vegetation. You're saying you'd lose wetland on the dam? I'm not going to. This was a condition to create this as a wetland. I'm not going to be able to make wetland species that are specified on the replanting here if it's going to be too high out of the wetland. Not going to have the water right on the wall. On the wall, well, in front of the wall. This lets me bring the grades of the wetlands right to the face of the wall. The shorter I make this, the, the more difficult the grading becomes to make that work. 
So is this the first so time we're, I'm sorry, is this the first time we're seeing the proposed wetland C replication area plans? No, these are the plans. <laughs> sorry, forgive me, it was a while. <coughs> I just want to, I just want to, I've got my original plans, so I just. Uh, and that right here, so this, this, is, this the is the original way that we talked about. Yeah, no, I see it. Um, existing paved driveway to be, uh, <coughs> that no is this it? No. Because there's no area C on here. Existing paved drive to be removed as shown, replaced with beer. That's not the, that's not the latest plan. What's the date of that one? This is the last plan I have. Um, it's... Why do you, you, you know, I got something new from the packet. This is a wetland replication plan, plan 823 2013. Yeah, you have it. 823 2013 <coughs> the date of the, the plan, of a, a replication plan, by BSC Group. Uh, 820 2013. Yeah, what do you have? By BSC Group. It was, I believe it was by submitted BSC. separately as a separate submittal from. Swimming in plans, everybody. Else. Find it. I don't even know if it was a full size plan. I think it was a separate package that was submitted. Was it? Okay. All right. I'm just and trying to. We just incorporated it into the plan to show it. <coughs> yeah, the this way, the way was. The, most recent plan that they, that they gave the way was on the approved on the approved plans. Yes. But that was to create 1,200 square feet of what? Okay, yeah, so, so this, the where is the wetland C creation area? Is it that mm -hmm. area? And that area yeah. where the driveway was. Okay. So it's blending into the, so the wetlands there, the wall. So that 1,200 square feet is, is that area. That's the sidewalk. That's not and we've already taken out the driveway to there. Right. To where it's supposed to be. And do we know the elevation of the ground surface on this side of the wall and the elevation of the ground surface on that side of the I wall. I think the way it says, it says this is going to be over excavated and it's going to match the elevation. Once once we put the wall in, then we were going to pull back after the wall is constructed, then we'll pull this out of here and match the grades. To match the grades to here Correct. or to here? No, to this side. So what's going to be the elevation difference between this side and that side of the ground surface? Um, you know, it's going from 103.97 there, and there's an elevation of 106.53. It's 106.94 in the middle, so this is going to come down to the grades. Whatever the adjacent grades are here, we'll, we'll peel that back in and, and blend it into the, to the face of the wall. And so that's 107.1 there. It's going to go, obviously, that's going to be a wetland, so it's going to be closer to a wetland elevation. Do you have a question? So it looks like, I know that it sounded like it was the one in the entrance. Street. That was right, the so the yeah. But you're getting wetland replication. Well, this weir was on that, on the older plan. <coughs> and then this replication plan was a separate packet. This 823.13 replication plan. When did we approve the order of conditions? Is that after the order of conditions was approved? So that was a. I don't think. Rather the driveway come in separate than have to come back before the commission. Oh, the the driveway did come in separate. Yeah, that that didn't change this. Oh, no, I, I, did, I, I didn't know. A, I, I that just was a separate. Um, I mean, it was close. It was in the same area. <coughs> Sorry. Just try to. Uh, the, uh, put a date on this? The Sorry. order of conditions was approved after 823. So that was part of After 823. Okay. I'm just surprised I don't have those documents. Um, because I remember this discussion, it went on for a long, 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 long time, um, and and this whole wetland creation area C um, was going to be hashed out after the order of conditions was signed, and I haven't seen that. I'm not sure. You know, you can't rely on my memory all the time, granted. <laughs> but I don't think we have, before tonight, seen 
and that these the schematics. Now, granted, you you've submitted them to us, and they were in our packets, and here they are. Um, but I'm just trying to compare this with what was in the order of conditions, and hopefully, I have an accurate order of conditions. I mean, um, because well, the after purpose I of us being here tonight signed. was, do you want it or you don't want it? I mean, I thought that was going to be the yes or no answer. Is one, if we one. take if we take take the weir out and just let it be whatever it Will is agree. when we take it, and then the whole thing becomes wetlands. It's just that I told my client that if you instruct us to do that, that you take the responsibility for any damage downstream that's going to be caused by this because you're removing a hydraulic right. constriction. Well, I, right. and, and I think and I think the reason why we put in the <coughs> in the order of conditions um, a, a hydraulic analysis is to try and quantify what that, you know, to kind of get a, a planned heads up, how much damage would that be? Is there going to be significant damage so that we have some actual data and analysis? Right. And that's to when we back off, and George said that if he was going to do that, he would do that, but we weren't going to do that because we demonstrated with our plan that there was a 60% reduction in the amount of tributary or water and, and peak flows to the upper sections and you know like a 60 percent reduction in the other section so we had mitigated reduction based on increased wetland area no based and on the decrease, fact that we have a decrease in the pervious area pervious. from the prior oh, okay, usage okay. on the site so all we were doing was comparing the existing site to the proposed site and demonstrating drastically that there was a reduction in both of the watersheds that we're talking about here, regardless of how big this tributary watershed is to this. Yeah. And the, the thing that we were most concerned about was removing this hydraulic control that's there, that's actually functioning that way now, without having, without everybody understanding there's a consequence to doing that. Right, we, do, we don't want, you know. Right. We, we know, we hear when, when there's damage because, you know, that's what where we're, besides storage or, you know, we get the people coming to do, to do that. I thought your involvement was in this because um, Janie had actually spoken to you about this because what is draining into that upper wetland area closer to the road is street runoff. And state you would state drainage those, goes in through there. And you would know those numbers. And so that's we, we, we my memory right. as to why. Um, yeah, that hydraulic control is needed to prevent damn treating flooding. <clears throat> right. I mean, I, that's if, a given. We're not, we're not asking to change that. But there was some question about whether or not it was needed. That's why and the that's, language is. And that's there, the there, final there no question, question that, that's left unanswered. There was no question from the engineer that in essence there was going to be downstream flooding or if that control something. That was, the <coughs> was that submitted to us? It was submitted to you during the during the hearing. That, that was a discussion we had. It went on and on. And the resolution was it will be proved as shown, but if in fact George gathers data that shows it's not needed, then it would be taken up. That's right. The piece. Right. But it was approved as shown. Right. Because there was proof presented to you an expert testimony from Peter Overton that there will be a problem you take that word up, that word is needed. And the extra vegetation, the replication, was not done to interfere with weapons. It was done to be the call for variance. Remember the location of the building and so forth? Right, and it's very, very close. So it's we offered that. So that's why BSC right. came up with those points. Right, right. So that's what it was. The plan was approved with the wind <coughs> And subsequently, the town, if it decided itself that it didn't need it, it, it would take it up. Um, but the burden was on the applicant to do that. In fact, the applicant's concerned with that, and your engineer's concerned with that. So we're here only to get the weird issue done because we want to proceed with the project. Right. So it sounds like it's, a, it's approved, unless we rescind the approval. Unless George's review, right. or unless the engineering right. department's review There's of the weird. There's nothing else that wasn't necessary. Is, is that possible? That the mm. weird could be. <laughs> by, by when? Well, let me just ask you. If, I mean, it's, it's not like we really have 
much spare time downstairs right now. I understand. What do you think that what do you think that drain and how much payments going on? Quite a bit, huh? You know, we we don't have good records on the state drainage. I mean, we can I can look and see if um, if we have a little better idea on our um, on our storm stormwater mapping. I, I I just don't know what we found in there. I do know that we did find that the state drainage does go through there. Did, did, didn't you think though that, that we are served a good purpose? Yes, I mean there's there's, yeah. there's a control there. I yeah. mean that, that driveway was a yeah. control, yeah. Uh, and and without you know without substantial analysis of the entire drainage system right, right. you can't just look at one individual site I mean yes there's you know the site is a reduction in impervious there's an reduction and reduction in runoff that's going downstream from that site but you know based on the total volume that's coming into that site it's still even even with the reduction it could pose problems downstream mm -hmm. if you opened it all up so without the analysis, without a complete hydraulic ana analysis of the entire watershed, you can't determine that, right? Because even the downstream, even the downstream uh, um, variables affect what happens when you take that out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and one thing is for certain: if you take it out, this upstream storage area no longer exists for the most part. I mean. Whatever sort of detention time you get from the flow going through with the wetland plants, you would still have, but that actual ponding and, and metering of, of that water would be lost. Right. Um, no, I, I mean, I don't think anybody's arguing to uh, take the rear edge with a clear demonstration that it's not needed. I mean, it sounds to me like that hasn't been done, so the plan stands. The right. Uh, it, it, it's unfortunate, but I guess I'll be the bad person here. Um, if the commission was that adamant that they did not want that there, then they should have fought, they shouldn't approve the uh, plan. Right. They shouldn't issue it out of conditions, and they should have made they should have made the applicant either prove it could be there or not be there. Right. And it's unfortunate now that you have an approved plan that shows a weir, but you have a condition that contradicts what you approve mm -hmm. for a plan. Yeah, I see. I see that. So when you did this application, you did the hydrological analysis for um, the existing condition? Existing to propose. To propose, okay. For the lot. Just, for, just only for the lot. For the comparative lot. purposes of the analysis, it was just Correct. looking at the boundaries of the, of Correct. the lot, yes. existing to propose. Typically what you do. And it's not. They didn't do the upstream. It, you know, there may be a thousand ground. acres to it, there might be two acres yeah, to ever it. Ever yeah. since the conservation laws changed, everyone just constantly looks at the lot. They don't look at the entire watershed. Right. Back in the 70s and early 80s, you used to get them to look at the entire watershed. But once the change came in 83 or 4, whatever it is, it's, well, it's, in, it's just the individual sites. Alternatively, George, in, in hindsight, um, rather than asking the applicant to do that, we could have hired at the applicant's expense. You you could have hired you could have hired yeah. a consultant at yeah. the applicant's expense, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The laws allow you to do that. You look physical, Brian. No. Okay. So, um, so at this point tonight, I mean, it how sounds do we get like through it, this? It's how do we get through this? We've now gone this completely in a circle. No, this is it. No, I mean, it's, this is what's approved, and this is what they're going to build, and unless we tell them remove the wear and oh, some the consequences. <laughs> That's what they that's what they have. And, and since there's no further information, that's what the former condition said. If there's further information that shows that this doesn't have to be installed, then don't install it. It sounds to me like they're all set. That's it. There's nothing that can be done. I think you are gonna get what you want out of it. You're gonna get the wetland you're gonna get a very you're gonna get an expanded wetland on that. The weir is going to be the narrow weir that you were talking about. It's just a little bit longer than what you thought it was going to be. If it was going to, if it was going to be this, it's just that this doesn't work when you when when you still have that other part of it that you have to deal with. Is that weir going to be the same elevation? I guess all the way all the way across. No. 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 It's, it's, it's got a. It's got. It, it mimics the existing driveway. Well, the weir will. Well, the top of the weir is mimicking the, what the driveway oh, elevations right. were that we took out. Right. We, we got elevations and, and that's what's shown on the detail sheet. Do we know if water ever over top that driveway? Pardon me? Do we know if the water ever over top that driveway? I don't know. I don't know. 
Is there Probably a wide D notch wiener? Is that wide or long now? <laughs> a long, long, exactly. <laughs> so, so you're not before us tonight to change. We thought we were going to come in and say, yes, take the weir out, or no, leave the weir in. But all we want is a yes or no, so when we tell the contractor to start building, he knows what he's building. Do we have... It's actually cheaper for us if we don't build the weir. If, right? if, well, let me just tell you, if you take the, that weir, if we say, take the weir out, um, you're left with a sliver of land I mean, according to the plan, you're left with a sliver of land coming down into wetlands. If we if we took it out, then we would just then we would connect it, like Jamie said. Just connect it, yeah. <coughs> Do we have a planning plan for a wetland C? Yes, there is. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can tell you right now, I will I will not support taking. It. I don't think we have the authority to, unless, even George, we unless George tells us. I don't that. think we have any data showing Without us the data, sure. I would not support right. that. Yeah. I, I would agree. If taking the weir out without proof is foolhardy. Not, is not recommended. <laughs> That's why we left it. We didn't ask him to take the weir out unless George told him to, because we didn't want that um, hanging on our George, head. tell us no. <laughs> <laughs> I just said I don't recommend it without. So, so I think that you know, we don't have to do. I don't think we have to do anything. You know, the, the, the water condition stands the way it was issued. You know, there were no changes. It was built, built the way it was issued. Just tell Chuck that because Chuck's the one that keeps bugging me about it. Well, yeah, because he's probably reading the order of conditions, which completely yeah. um, disagrees with what we you know, we've been talking about. But you just read us what the order of conditions says, right? Right. That's what you read. Right. So that to me sounds like the weir is in unless. Yeah, with respect to the weir, we're, we're everything's the beach. But that constructed wetlands is um, a bit at variance with what we said. Right, right. This but I'm not sure it's a. Um, this talks about. Fatal fall. Replacing the gravel driveway that separates the two wetlands with an open natural channel. That's what this says. This is a very wide channel. That's what it looks like. Very wide it's, channel. It's, it's <laughs> a wide channel that became a replication. It's only yeah. a channel. It's only a channel after like three hundred year storms within a week. Correct. That's Correct. it. Where is so the very detail for that weir? Is it in our package? You have it. I, I'm not here. Right. I, it's, is it, is it there? Yeah. <coughs> so it does have an opening at the bottom. It's not the same pipe. Though. No, we're putting, we're, we're making this hot pipe. And that's at the elevation of the existing pipe. Yes, and it's an 11 inch. And does it will it discharge to a channel or just to the to the wetland on that then gradient side? Well if you're at that channel that the state has where the pipe goes out, so where the pipe comes out, the pipes this is only a foot wide, so where the pipe is probably twenty feet long now, that pipe will come out and that'll all get pulled out. So there'll probably be a foot of burp wrap just at the exit part of that pipe. So if there's a velocity comes through there, it doesn't promote the channel. But there is that state channel that goes down across. Okay, I guess I'm good with that. Okay, do we have a, should we make an official motion? Make one official. The, um, I don't think you changed anything. No, I don't think anything changed it. Okay. Based on what you read on the order of conditions, since there's no additional information, nothing changes. We're, we're not changing. It's proceeding the way we're showing. Proceeding as shown on the approval. And do we know when the construction will be done? I keep hearing as soon as the weather permits. They've been very anxious to get going. I think they've engaged the contractors. Um, or 
well, some of the building uh, is yeah, the building. Uh, but they're set to go ahead and construction the building. So I, I would say probably within 60 days. Okay, By July, when the snow melts. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying okay. June, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, for Thanks George. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks for waiting. <coughs> <coughs> I wish I could have helped you, but. <laughs> um, all right, George. There's another another job you wanted to discuss with us. That's oh, this was it. <coughs> that was it. I mean, unless you had, I mean, unless I mean, Chuck didn't draft the order of conditions, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, the pump stations? Pump stations, yeah. Oh, I, I know he was working on them, but I don't think he had did. I didn't oh, know I if he had he finished did. them or not. Uh, or conditions or street pump, sta pump station. Yeah, I think he did. Brian, I think you should replace that pump station. Put it in a vacuum sewer system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the one on Plum Island that yeah, froze? Yeah, they exactly. have them on the show. Like the one on Plum, Plum Island that froze? Exactly. Yeah, they used yeah. one too. It froze? Well, all I know is I remember hearing about the, a, a pump station on Plum Island that froze, and I and I think that's all they have there is the vacuum system. Do you want to see Yeah, there's people had to move that for weeks yep. of their houses. I think people had to move that of their houses yeah. for weeks. I heard they have 600 of those up there. <laughs> I mean, they work. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, <coughs> you know, something something must have happened. I don't know. Okay, so with all the conditions. The west, okay, so this is the West Street. Okay, sorry. Yeah, because there, no, there was no wetlands on it. Yeah. Actually, I don't know why Bachelor Road is here because Bachelor Road are out of the way. It's just at the plan. It's, Where it's you a, see It's Bachelor? a joint uh, in the title. Attachment order conditions for yeah. West Street and Bachelor the Road. Yeah. The plan it's just that we're going out as a joint contract, but only the, the order condition should only apply to exactly. West Street. Okay, well, that. where's. Sorry, Top of the page. All pages. All pages. It's in the On heading. The oh, okay. It's just third line. Okay. Yeah, and that's right from the cover of the plans. That's the only reason it's there. It's the, that's the plans, the combined plan set. Yeah, it's a, oh, right, right, it's, right. A, it's a combined right. contract that goes out at once. Material shall be located at least 75 feet from BBW in the vernal Let's pool. Let's try it the end of the vernal pool. That's probably the carryover. Thank you. 
13. Talk about the watering and the spilling basin shall not be close to 100 feet from the board of eight, board, uh, board of vegetative <coughs> wetland. Um, I mean, on where the pump station is, you just have the top of the bank and there's really no wetland there, right? What I'm concerned of is the language. I mean, obviously we're going we're gonna to move this as far as away from any resource area as possible, but if there's uh, wetland vegetation across the street, the 100 foot distance may put it out of our easement area on Carmel That's my only concern. Because um, we only have that little postage stamp that of an easement where the stop station is. And I just don't know if that 100 foot distance con conflicts with that. Um, would you be willing to accept if we remove that 100 feet that the uh, watering plan be approved sure. prior to construction? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. Then. Can you uh, repeat the edit there? Let me see. Any dewatering activities associated with the project will that that be subject to submission of a detailed dewatering plan and approval by the Conservation Commission. Can I make a friendly suggestion? Sure. Not that I want your commission, but can can you leave the language that that exists and just say any deviation from this the dewatering plan shall be um, approved by the Conservation Commission prior to it, uh, implementation. That way there if we can meet the hundred, because I don't know so what's there, we're all set. And if we can't meet the 100, then we're going to have to come back here and get the plan approved. I'm wor wondering, based on what we saw on West Street uphill, if the spilling basin is going to work. It may not. That's fine. I mean, leave it leave it approved it by the commission. It says we're a similar device, term of seven, so we don't have to. <clears throat> well, that so, last so sentence. If you look at the last sentence, you yeah. can say the commission shall approve the spilling basin specifications and location. Get out of hand location prior, yeah, that's fine. prior to discharge. Okay. Let's say stilling basin or similar device and location. That's fine. So yeah. we might have to go to a frack tank again. Could. Could very well. Okay, we're, well only, we're only going down 25 case. feet, so yeah, we could. Just here, 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 here. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot flying around here. I think it was fairly simple. Does that make sense to you? Um, okay, or similar device. In 14 is where you saw the girl. Device. Yes. Specifications. And we struck that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Wait a minute, number five on your document says certified rental pool number 327. I don't remember discussion. I don't either. George, do you remember anything? I wasn't here during the hearing. Ryan was, so I and I don't remember Chuck, Chuck talking about it, but let's uh, go back to our notes. Huh? He's He's got a listed for May 29th, and uh, yeah, he's got a, the documentation in uh, document Probably. five. You can see a verbal pool check in resource area. Yeah, if, if the language in 14 stays the same, you know, whether if I don't think it really matters. If there's no vernal pool there, then there's no issue. If there is a vernal pool, then you have the 75 foot uh, stipulation. So, does it matter? If I don't think. I don't remember any. <laughs> 
camps talking about any hurdle. I don't need and, I, and, I, and I would have thought that they would have mentioned that. Hold on, I've got the notice of intent. Here it is. Um, Nothing in the resource area description. Figure four, estimated habitats map. Figure four, looking for it. See this, this one? But I, I don't know. See? Yeah. Which, which append is that? Uh, right before appendix, appendix A. Right before appendix A. Yeah. Gotcha. That's figure four. Figure two? Four. It is right before. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's not even on the same side of the road. Right. Um, but it's within. We are using a big old road. You can tell where the road is. Oh, this is maybe, maybe 150 yeah. square feet. I don't think it's within 100. I guess West Street. 250. Yes. It's not within 100 feet. It's not. So something's not right. It's no. not the right idea. What was not even the right idea? West Street. It's not. It's not within 100 feet. Yeah. So I, West Street's not. We're down here. We're down here. It's over 1,000 feet away. No, 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 no. No, no the, the yellow box is the project location. Right, correct. No. Yeah, it is because no. West Street goes over the. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm yep. sorry. Yeah, there's yep, Catherine you're, you're Avenue, correct. and yes. that's over. That's more than 100 feet away. Yeah. I. So I. I that's fine. We, we I, the language the way it is is. Oh, the that's issue. West Street right there. Okay. Yeah, but if you like. Okay, line. there it is. I would prefer to take it out because it it just it adds confusion. The, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Let's take it out. So you take it out from the. Um, 14. Take it out from the documents. Take it out from the documents. Take it out from 14. We can leave it in the document. Now let's take it out. Why? <coughs> because we looked at it and saw it was more than 100 feet away. If it's more than 100 feet away, is it jurisdictional? No, but I'm saying we made that determination. I, think that's okay. I don't know why we listed it. I'm all for avoiding the confusion um, aspect of it, but maybe one of the findings should be that the yes, uh, that's vernal pool. Maybe we should add a finding. That the vernal pool is, but do we know that? I mean, that the vernal pool is over 100 feet away. I just scaled it off of this, and we're going to trust that figure four. Um, if if everyone's comfortable with that, mm -hmm. I'll put it in. So when I put it in as a point of finding, yes, I went um, maybe s the new seven mm -hmm. or maybe a, what's this? Oh, the numbers are a little off. Yeah, the numbers are off. Numbers are a little bit off. Hold on. They're over ten. Yep. Okay, we'll fix that. Um, Maybe uh, should be eight, nine, eleven. We just yeah. added it at the end. How about on uh, page eleven? We'll just add it as a new seven there. A new seven? Yeah. Right. Why are we taking that seven? No, we're going to renumber it as eight. The new eight, the eight. So you're just going to say no work is at the end. Um, within a hundred feet of vernal pool, and no, then the next. Yeah, year. there you go. How about, how about right. the nearest? 
external pool is over 100 feet up gradient. Well, I, I, I bet if we just edit number seven, there's no work proposed within the 25 foot zone of natural vegetation or within 100 feet of any certified rural pool. I like that. Okay. That was George's idea. <laughs> Occasionally, it's just less words. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I'll edit that here. So let's read number. Well, it's eight. Don't have to touch that. Yeah, you're just gonna make six, this nine, six, seven, nine. Ten. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other edits? Talked about where we, we, we what direction or where we had to push it off to. Yes. <coughs> I remember Ryan's conversation. Where where are you in the review? If you don't mind, Jamie, what page are you on? Page four oh, page fourteen twenty eight. Fourteen. Is um has anybody come across a text talking about hazardous materials? Because that was something I, I believe Brian you brought up. I didn't bring it up for our purpose. I brought it up for the town's right. To, to, right. We we have thrown uh, camp has added uh, some language and just added some language into the contract documents regarding um, hazardous materials and probably uh, you know, I have the sample specs down the contract downstairs, but I forget <coughs> how they worked it with the bid cap. Actually, it's a lump sum, so they worked in the language. Okay. That was that was a concern. I didn't want the contractor to come up on something and say, "Oh, you guys are gonna pay us." Yeah. So. Plus, they were, were actually still um, waiting from the uh, documentation from RMLD, which we have not received yet. Proving is closed know? out. Proving is closed out. Okay. Right. So, if George has that covered, do we want to add something to our order of conditions? To what effect? I don't, I don't think that's. No. Technically, not a wetland issue, per se. Unless stockpiled materials erode into the wetland, but it's, it's such a limited site. I, okay. I don't see anything okay. being stockpiled. It's going to be direct okay. haul right out. As long as you've caught it, your contract documents, the town should be protected. Okay. Any other questions? Or Did, was additional information submitted regarding this project? Oh, I did, but I know camp. <coughs> I, remember, I remember getting an email from the, uh, okay. Diane saying that she had submitted additional information because I'm just looking at our notes and it said uh, the additional information required wetland was the for wetland falls. take off riverfront area and loop around mm -hmm. front, 12 inch compost filling, compost sock. Uh, it was it was submitted before, like the day before or stuff like that, or the the meeting that was canceled. Oh, okay, okay. So it was in our first. The type of erosion do we put in here? Do we say just silicate?
the type of erosion control <coughs> is be less exact and make a more general word or we could go I mean, it's worth changing they got a five foot socks in anyways it's like it's easy to handle okay it's easy, then let's it's just easy put, to remove why don't we it put again. it in so that when we're checking the paperwork with it matches um, so then I'll change five prior to any other activity on this site um, Compost, erosion control, help me with the wording, somebody. Erosion <coughs> control. 12 inch diameter sill sock shall be installed. 12 inch diameter sock. Silt socks. Silt socks. Silt socks. Uh, shall be installed. Number 16 on page 14, sorry to talk. Equipment materials, that's the first two words I have a concern of. Fuel, store, fuel storage and refueling, fine, that's fine. We can do that away from 100 feet from the boundaries of the wetlands. But the site is within 100 feet of the wetland. So you, in equipment that to do the work or in incidental materials that you do in the building can't be located more than 100 feet. Because of the site. Because oh, of the site. Well, no, this is equipment, materials, and fuel storage. The, you're going to have you're going to have a backhoe there that's within 100 feet. Yeah, but it's not going to be stored there. It's going to be, be sitting. It's gonna, well, yeah, but it's. I, I take that to read that equipment, materials. I mean, if if you feel that it means stored there, then I don't have a problem. I mean, we can we can add the word storage three times, but that's what we're referring to. Okay. Do you want to say? No, I mean, if that's what the commission feels, I don't. You can leave it as it is. I, I don't care. I mean, it's it's this commission and Chuck that are going to enforce this. Right. Exactly. Um, okay. Uh, Keep that back over here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, right. You can't keep that sheeting that you're going to put in tomorrow. Here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think it's understood that there's going to be materials that on the work site. And you know, and I think it obviously is made for a larger site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100 feet puts it at the it's at about 15 feet uphill of the existing fence. You know, I, I mean... It's well, you have, really, you have the top of the bank, that's the edge, that's the... Edge of property. There, and right. I don't, yeah. So the 100 feet goes well beyond that. Well, how about we say greater than, um, I mean, it's going to be outside of the erosion control. Why don't we say greater than 50? Why don't you just well, leave, why don't you just leave, leave it fuel? Yeah. I, I, I don't care how you want to leave it. Like you said, I mean, you, if the intent is, you know, the equipment there is working and stuff and everything, you can. Um, what's the 
Somebody want to propose some language? I think it's good. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next. Okay. I think I have that. It's. Um, is there a motion to approve as amended tonight? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Now you can recycle that one. So I have uh, I have the original here. I'll just <coughs> sign it. Pass it around, and I have the edits marked. <coughs> so signatures. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, George. <coughs> Thanks for coming in and waiting through. No problem. Have a good day. All right. You too. Thank you too. Here, right. It was an after the fact determination of applicability. How many uh, how many trees did you remove? Two pine trees. They were they were bad. Oh yeah. Yeah. They were, they were yeah. Oh you saw? Yeah, yeah, they had pictures. Photos. Yeah. pictures of photos them. and and what is it, Northeast Tree had a um, Was he before us like yep. he, Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Oh. So I thought Chuck had a determination. I'm he fine. called Chuck though before he removed it. Didn't yeah, they had yes. a conversation, and then one of the half of the tree fell off. Yeah. Yeah, and then Chuck they said, "Yeah, we're going to have to do this sooner than later." Yeah. So. And Chuck approved already an emergency certification yeah. for that. So. Um, so we're just approving the planning. I move we accept those two plannings he's proposed. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Okay. That's it. I, I guess I thought I had some paperwork for that, but I guess I didn't. You can take care of that. I guess next. I don't. Okay. okay. All right. Um,
What's new and improved? What's new and improved? Uh, the um, new. Did you see the speaker? I guess speaker talk, Brian. It was. It was the new secretary of the EOEA, um, and uh, he. He claimed to be an avid outdoorsman and big fan of wetlands and big fan of acquiring more yeah. open space and, and protecting them. Protecting What's his name? I can't tell you off the top of my head. I'm sure if I have my conference information, <laughs> I'd be able to tell you. Um, I went to... I was busy downstairs eating donuts and coffee. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. I got a couple of freebies that I was thinking of giving away either Earth Day or Friends and Family Day. Um, I went to uh, talk about enforcing wetlands violations, a talk about uh, green infrastructure for stormwater treatment and control, um, which was that, was, that was really valuable to me because, you know, at a lot of these meetings, they just kind of blurt out information at you. At this particular meeting, it was all about um, strategically as a town, how do you develop the grant money, uh, the cooperation with the with um, the engineering department, um, how do you mobilize the community and get other uh, communities around you engaged um, to have a sh who have a shared vested interest in okay, that talk. Sarah Grady and Maureen Thomas and they were um, they were part of the Mass Bay Estuary program, so they were South Shore, mm -hmm. um, so Kingston. Um, and they showed, they put up a bunch of poster, you know, nice pictures of, uh, you know, public uh, parking lot stormwater control gardens, and how this is year one, this is year two, this is year three, look how it's filled in, it's doing a good job, it's <coughs> so anyway, that was interesting because it was more strategy, which I thought which was useful to me. But anyway, um, um, I went to a talk about Kinder Morgan Pipeline, um, and the gist of that was, um, from the federal government standpoint, the Kinder Morgan Pipeline, which is coming through the northeast corner of Reading. Um, is probably going to be, uh, you know, that you really can't fight it and, and, and uh, fight its presence. You, it, it's coming through as long as um, the federal government decides there's um, a public, it serves a public good in that it, it provides energy resources to Commonwealth. I think there's some argument out there in the press about how much it's it, it really is serving the Commonwealth, or is it just all, all the energy is going to go overseas? But um, <clears throat> I got advised that uh, we need to stay in the know about this. Um, we need to file with FERC for an intervention, and do an ecological evaluation to assess how much um, value, what the value of the land they're going to disturb is to try and get mitigation on the property based on the proposed impacts. So I don't know how to get us into FERC to get us as a vested party for that mid intervention and that and to get in as a mitigation. Did you go to that open house? I did go to the open house. Who, who was the contact person? Many persons there. There were many. I, I think what I keep hearing from NACC is if we don't get in, if we don't put ourselves into the process and contact the right people, um, we're not going to have a leg to stand on for mitigation. So you need to find out who the project manager is from Kinder Morgan or find the contact person at first. Yeah. So. You know, I might even have this. But I guess my question is, but maybe AECOM. Oh, it was AECOM? <coughs> maybe AECOM. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm starting to think based on this December letter it is. I don't know if you remember maybe, this one. Maybe they have contact. You know, a lot of these companies, you know, tell all the projects they're on, so there may be something on their website talking about the project mm -hmm. who, who would have a contact name and number. But my question on that is, you know, how do you assess? Okay, so it starts here and it goes here. Now it might go through some wetland and close to vernal pools, upland. So how do you assess that? You know, do you go to the assessor's office and say, oh, we've got, you know, so many feet of, what is that word? <laughs> you know, what's, what's, what's the how, Yeah, what's how, did, the how do they figure that out? Or did they give you any I ideas don't about that? I don't know. Especially since it's on the ground and it's going from an existing easement already. Um, I, I, having never been through this process, on this end we, especially, we, we I, I don't know. Yes, right. It is. Uh, right. Kinder Morgan pipeline. Are they, are they preparing an environmental impact statement or environmental assessment? I'm not sure where they are in the process. Um, right now, it's in, it might be the IRR. We would have to be notified. Well, we uh, were. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we were. were. We were notified. Um, I suppose, yeah, there's no continuing notification. Correct. <coughs> you notify, yeah, but then I you're on your own after that. <laughs> what did I get? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. What do you mean you just installed it? <laughs> um, so what's the existing, uh, right, is it an existing gas line that they're going through? No. But there is an existing um, electrical. Oh, okay. they're, they're going through an existing. Uh, they're going to try and piggyback next yeah. to. They're going to try and get eminent domain claim, eminent domain okay. on property there. So what I was told was that it's important to identify valuable uh, resources on, to FERC on maps and plans, and the sooner the better. Okay, but. So it's going into an electrical, an existing electrical right of way. Right. Only well, it's not feet going in or <coughs> adjacent to. Oh, is so it is I in heard. our land or private land. Correct. It would be our. It would be town's land. Well, a variety of <coughs> private land. Some along. I mean, uh, no. For us, it's Timberneck Swamp. Timberneck. Okay. Gotcha. North Cedar. Right. Probably so North Cedar. North Cedar I Swamp. I think it's North Cedar. Um, yeah, I think it is North Cedar. I think it's North Cedar yeah. Swamp, and it okay. is. Okay, so they, so they get some kind of a lease arrangement when they're going through private land. And yeah, they take the property, property by property. And so we get to do, we get to exact a price. Right. So you right. must, must be referring to that uh, that that line that goes through that yep. clearing right there. It must yep. be yep. somewhere in there. So. Yep. So I've got I took paperwork when I went to the open house. Um, frequently asked questions. Uh, here I've got more than one copy for it. Uh, so I think this is something we, we need to stay involved in and um, if anybody's interested in taking it on besides me, I'm uh Oh, oh, this is good. Local impacts. There is something on the effect of natural gas, the effect of natural gas pipelines on residential values. Residential property values. How about the, but there is, I've almost seen a study on natural resources. Well, this, this gives the aid um, project, project manager right here. Yeah, yeah. Them. There's so many people working on this project um, at so many different levels that, um, <coughs> what's I the mean, person's name? If you're interested, just call or email this person. What's his, what's his name? Lori Terry and has her email and phone number right here. 
and she's the project manager for the project, <coughs> and they're preparing an ER, which will then become an EIS, prepared by her. So, um, you could get on the mailing list. Yeah. And you could specifically ask to be included in the scoping process for the EIS. Do you want to talk about that, Jamie? No, I do not. Yeah. <laughs> You've got familiarity. Yeah. I have familiarity, but I do not have any time. Okay. Yeah. The second page gets her name and address. I sent it to her. Yeah, maybe, no. It's L O R. Yeah, it's Laura. Laura. Yeah. What's 630? What? Uh, Our address is Rhode Island, but Rhode Island is That's New Hampshire. Six, no, 603. In Rhode Island, 401. Not 630. Oh. 630, really? Could be. Yeah. I so think Rhode Island might have two zip codes. I mean, two areas. It might. So here's the countrywide look mm -hmm. of all the gas lines. So anyway. Um, <coughs> Illinois. I can't. Illinois? <laughs> Six three zero and three three one. In Rhode Six. Island four oh one. It is. That's my memory. That's interesting. Yep. So uh it is way in mass. Where's Massachusetts? So the the part that goes Sorry. through our area, Rebecca, would be the twenty inch Linfield lateral. And what, what is your concern or objection? <clears throat> I just want to position <laughs> us. I just want to position us the best possible way before they walk in. I mean, there's been some some advice handed out by an ACC on um, how to cope with this. And, well, I think yeah. MA, you told me that MACC said, you know, you get in there early yes. and, you know, ask for compensation because when these things go through private land, they get compensated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why should yeah. they get right. the carte blanche to go through running? That basically, if they yeah. have, if they have, they take, they take the land by eminent domain and when they do, they, the government has the authority to do that pursuant to just compensation. They value the land right. based on whatever. So they will do a taking, but there has to be a land they, valuation. They cannot. Well, they do ask you for donations, but. I know. You're not giving them. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> so in, I know in highway <laughs> easements and right of ways, often, you know, Massachusetts will ask for, for uh, donations for slope yeah. grading and construction easements. Yeah. And then if you if people don't donate, then they then they value the land and they value the easement and they pay it for it. Right? Yeah, but the basically once once it's been, FERC has decided that it's a that it's a serves a public good, and I think I heard a judge rule on that last week. It was in the news. But they but they still have to give you market value for whatever right. it is you're yeah, exactly. So, so we are need they, to. Are they going through wetlands or conservation yes. only? I think both. Yes, both. 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 It's right here. Well, they, they have to file a yes, permit but first, application. Right. But first, they take the land. They can't take it until they get a permit. No, I think no they, they, they can. can. Take it. They just can't do anything with it without a permit. It's just they like someone buying a lot. Actually, they can't. Got they can't take it because they have to demonstrate that they're actually going to use it. They can't just come out and take it and say, we might use it. If they don't no, have the right. rules to use it, they can't take it. But they're in the process of getting Oh, I see what you're saying. I, I see, yeah, it's different. Yeah, that's a good thing. They, they, could, they could issue, they could negotiate to take it contingent upon getting all the approval. Right. right. This is the way it works. But they already have to come before us because it's our jurisdictional area, so. Right. It, it, um, Anika, yeah. if, if, if you want to get involved, the thing to do is make sure you're notified of the scoping meeting and, and make a statement. What is a scoping meeting? Before what? they prepare the environmental impact statement, they have to hold a scoping process. It doesn't have to be a meeting. Telling them what they're looking at, yeah, what they, kind of impacts they 
expect from the project. And you can tell them you have to look at this, that, and the other thing, and then they're obligated to do it. And then they also have a site visit, too, that you're supposed to be notified of. Is that correct? Mm, Not necessarily. No, so we, we so. want to be at the scoping no. meeting and provide input to it. Right. I don't know if we do, but if you do, that's the way we get involved. Okay. Yeah, the 30 inch line is a pad to ask. I don't know if they send it to Linfield or through Linfield. 20 inch. Oh, 20, 20 inch, right. Um, that's not supplying right. No, it's, it's going through. Yeah, it's going through. Where's the terminal? What, what are they? I want. I want to say I heard it to the coast. Is that That's correct? what probably. I, I think, yeah, I think we, we have so, a terminal in Reading. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not only it's not only us. Interestingly, in North Reading, the the person at the open <coughs> house said, "Oh, Reading." He's like, "We're going through your RMLD property in North Reading." What RMLD property? He's like this one right here. It's going, yeah. it's going through their back driveway. Yeah, R M L D on the plane, right? In North Reading. North Reading, right? So, so uh, <coughs> anyway, so way more than we need to know to evaluate whether you know the, the permit itself. It's all this sort of back information that needs to be sorted through, sifted through, and engaged in. I'm completely overwhelmed with the thought of trying to figure it out. So if you have any wisdom on a flow chart of some sort on how it works. Um, somebody in that, in that meeting, um, there was a, a woman from the Army Corps went through um, their part in the process. Um, <coughs> Did she say they were cooperating agency? Um, I think they are a cooperating agency, but they're clearly not the only one. Um, well, then it's because really, it's they probably have to cross wetlands. Right? right. The Corps looks yeah. at each wetlands crossing individually. Oh, they look at the wetlands crossing. Right. They look at the wetlands crossing. Yeah. Um, and she also said that the pipeline is covered under the Army Corps' 2015 Massachusetts General Permit. Yeah. Which basically says if you comply with Massachusetts Wetland Act, you comply with right. the law. Oh, okay, okay. I have no idea. I have no idea. You know, I'm just writing down right. the pertinent points. Um, the Army Corps has jurisdiction regarding fill or discharge in wetlands. They must minimize or avoid impacts. So if they see the route goes a certain way and they think it can go a different way to minimize or avoid impacts, they'll propose that or um, they'll do that. Um, she gave me a website. I'll go look that up when I get home. Okay. So that was that was it. I thought the conference was it was pretty helpful for me. Um, that was it done? It. Good? <laughs> they they were um, <laughs> like yogurt, fruit. <laughs> I um uh, lunch. Yeah. yeah, it is. Wonderful job. Yeah. Um, and the chow hall. Yeah. It's amazing how many people attend that thing, too. Yes, it's a lot. Um, Have you been, Jamie? I went to one a long time ago. I didn't really learn anything in my seminars that much. It was just, there was some case studies that they did um, about web reputation areas on one, and Chuck, was, Chuck and I were at both of them. And then the new regulations for the streamlined permitting for ecological restoration projects. I, I actually looked into that because I'm, I'm doing a, a partial restoration of an area and a culvert removal, and, and they've added more forms and more regulations and more notifications, and then they're calling it simplified. I don't understand how they do that, but it, really, really strange. Is so, that somebody from DEP that gave the talk? Yeah. Yeah, well, they weren't necessarily calling it simplified. They're called streamlined, even though you're going to fill out more forms and notify more people of the streamlined. So um, it's basically a general order of conditions for ecological restoration projects. 
If someone comes before us with that application, we are very, our hands are tied very much. Essentially, if we, you cannot deny it if they meet the criteria and the conditions are set. Now, that doesn't mean that your bylaw doesn't apply. Your bylaw does apply. So we can apply things through the bylaw. According to George, according to somebody, damaged properties is going to use that vehicle to um, oh. clear the forest between that's correct. That's correct. That, that's, Walker's that's Brook what Drive saying, and, the, to use that. And, the, and the store. So what, what they told me was, and Chuck was at the same seminar, there are a number of standards they have to meet, that, and we need to make sure that they meet that. We can't, we can't deny the project because we don't like it, essentially. Under the bylaws, we can. But under the bylaws, we can. We're, we're protected under the bylaws. And that's exactly what they said. Someone raised that question. They said, well, what if you have a local bylaw? They said, all bets are off. You can, the bylaws apply as you see fit. So it's supposed to allow the per easier permitting process to these projects that are supposed to benefit. Supposed to restore the Which in concept makes sense, but you have somebody like Dennis is just trying to subvert the intent of the. Yeah, and we'll have to look at it that way. I mean, that, that, that wetland is a mess down there. I mean, there are all kinds of vines growing in there. It's also all kinds of junk and trash, and we found a sacrificial altar in there once when we went in there. Where, where was this exactly? Money? The between uh, the Dennis Park or Ashton. Market Bar Basket parking lot and Walker's Brook Drive. Right. Okay. It, yeah, it's it, a bunch it, of teenagers. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. It's messy. It's not in good shape in there. Yeah. They were proposing a, a, a skateboard. They were in there. Yeah, yeah they were. No? Okay. We nixed that. <laughs> it's not really a. There's not much diversity there. It's probably like pretty close to a monoculture. <laughs> And yeah, a few tree species, and then across the way there's Fred Mighty's, you know. So, uh, but anyway, that's that's really um, <sighs> really all I, all I can. Can we adjourn? Uh, well, I'm bef falling asleep. Before before, before we do, if if that's all right, yeah, I'm, I'm all done. So I found the determination of applicability for um, for that we need to sign. Oh, okay. it would be good okay. to sign for Glenmere Circle. Yep. yep. So, um, do we already? Julie, did we already like approve the request for determination? We did. For yes, yeah. I was just reading it in the minute. Minutes. Okay. Well, yeah. wait a minute. I think so. Yep, yeah, the planting proposed is as two mountain laurel shrubs. And we already approved that. Yep. Um, okay, so here, so just sign. Thank you. You get two pens now. I do. Should I sign it twice? <laughs> Are the two of you here? <laughs> can't keep my eyes open. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, um, how about approving the water and sewer bill for um, Pearl Street? It's our quarterly Pearl Street water and sewer bill to cover the fee. It's for actually it's it's a store stormwater enterprise. Stormwater bill. enterprise. Right. Didn't worry, I'll look into that. But yeah, I did getting, and getting basically it, Especially yeah, since it's, there's no impervious area around the lot. No, no, no. This is the Pearl Street. There is impervious area. There is. There is. There's a there's no. driveway and a. Have you yeah, seen it? It's it's in such bad it's condition. Impervious. It's actually pervious. Maybe we should make it impervious. No. Maybe the fee would go. Well, away. it probably should be impervious. Um, there's no reason it's that paved. So how many people? So it's thirty-five dollars and thirty-seven cents. Motion to pay. Second. Okay. All those in favor. Okay. How many infiltrators have we required people to install? I mean, we make this town infiltrate. Seriously. Yeah, I know. Um, I, know. I think I said that the last time it came up. I How think we should be spending some of that enterprise fund to, to correct some of these problems we have. Right now. I hear you. Um, They're sitting on 
a quarter million dollars. So what about uh, minutes? Do you have any? Yep, there's two sets of minutes. There's February, January 28th, and February 25th. I didn't look at these too carefully, but. Terry's last meeting. Are there any other comments on the January 28 minutes, or do you want more time? Uh, motion to approve. I move we approve the January 28 minutes. Second. All those in favor? Okay. About the February 25. Um, there, there's at least one correction. Um, on page two. Actually, if you could number the pages, it would help. So Thank on you. page two. Um, the second paragraph that be begins Elena. Elena on the third line says wetland findings in both areas all work being done outside the buffer zone actually on West Street is being done inside the buffer zone outside the yeah okay so change it to inside well, no, because at the other station on Batchelder, it is outside. Um, outside the 25 foot? No, it's outside the buffer zone. No, I know, but for West Street, it's outside. How do you want to modify the text? Do you want to say it's outside of the 25 foot Z and V? I, we should say job for two locations are being um, bid together then we should say the one on West Street is inside the buffer zone and the one on Batchelder yes. is outside the buffer okay. zone oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then strike the sentence or the it's not a sentence phrase wetland findings in both areas yeah all work being done outside the buffer zone Okay, hearing none, um, I move we approve the minutes as amended. Is there a sec second? All those in favor? Before we vote, there's just one thing I want to point out on that same page. Yeah, what's that? Three quarters of the way down, it says Mr. Mullen requested a draft of order for review before signing the next meeting, which we didn't get. Uh huh. So I would just like to encourage Chuck, oh, he's not here, to get us those order conditions so we can read them. I'll mention that when, when I speak to him next. So that's my only comment. other comment. Okay. okay. <laughs> and we voted, is that we voted, right? No, we, we didn't did. vote. All right, all those there was a motion and it was seconded. All those in favor? Opposed. Okay, let's see. Um, any other matters anybody else wants to bring up except um, any anything anybody wants to discuss? No? No other matters? Did we hit all the items? Um, we didn't talk about the applications 
to include a request for field data sheets. That's something he had on the agenda. Um, oh, actually, did George submit those? Because the minute said, minute said you asked for them. Submit them for what? Uh, West the pump Street? stations. They, the pump they, station? they were in our packet. Okay. I saw them. I think they were engineering. They were Army Corps field data sheets. That's yeah, all right. They, they, they were different were. forms, yeah. Yeah, That's they were. That's all right, didn't it? No, no it isn't. Okay. It, it, you know, it's Massachusetts. Yeah, here we got somebody from Rhode Island. Oh, that's it, I think. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, is this something that Chuck should be telling people? I think maybe. You know, when they're, How when about, they're delineating, um, we'd like to see the data. You know, how about Hughes data. Environmental with that? Lindy you, Wallace? Uh, Tom Hughes, I mean, the one tonight. Be, because of that, because of that line, is that? I mean, does it make sense for everybody just to submit them, no matter what the line is? And I think it's good for practice, it's good, and I yeah, think it's, it's the form. data we need. He made a big issue. Yeah. That Who did? it takes you know a lot of money to fill them out. It doesn't. Who did that? It this doesn't. Guy Hughes. Hughes. And seriously, if you've done, you know, as many. It looks pretty quick to me. I mean, I, I, yeah. Yes, uh, it's if we require them of of applicants, then Chuck should do them too. When he does, right? When he does, if he's just looking at a line to see where it is, though, that's a different thing. All right. No, I see. But if he delineates for a ten project, then he has to do the forms. Yeah, he would. Right. He would, but not if he's checking somebody no. else's. Right. No. Right. No. DEP data forms. No. Right. But he actually, when he's checking the line, he should have those forms in hand. You know, that is a great idea because then, you know, the, the, the yeah. soils he could exactly. collect. Yeah. Yeah. I always include them when I submit. They, it's just automatic. I, I worked at a consultant firm and two of the guys, one engineer and one person who worked with me, are on ConCon. Oh, we don't ask Yeah. It's yeah. just more, it's more well, I think useful information for the commission <coughs> to make an educated decision on what they're, what they're willing It's on. also proof if ever it went to DEP. That's true. That's it's, true. It's proof. It is. It is. How about, um, should we just vote, uh, let, I'll propose that we vote tonight that, um, with well, it's a requirement. I don't think we have to vote. On a simple, we just need to enforce it. We just need to enforce it. it. Right. I think on simple things. Like a minor project? A minor project. No, yeah. Don't need it. Yeah. You're far enough away. But an NRAD, an RDA, oh, yeah. a notice of intent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. May, may, what about an RDA, though? I mean, are there, are there some instances where you won't need oh, them in an RDA? I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I, because you don't always, we the always minor, get flagging The minor them. stuff, the minor project, maybe not, but. Yeah, we don't flag them for minor projects usually. Yeah. Yeah, but, but for these big projects, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, anything else? Are we pretty, do we have a consensus on that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. And that Chuck will also do it when he's doing a delineation. Uh, when he's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then um, if there's no other business, a uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor. Adjourn. Early. Try. Oh, no. For